How you doing? This is BK from ManForWars.com and ManForWars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide, offline, locally teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and uh, to help the same polite patriots worldwide, offline, locally discuss and share great info they find online as uh, better people making better places to live, giving their neighbors a chance to hear different and think for themselves. If it's stupid, laugh at or correct it. If it's smart, enjoy and share it. And, uh, and that way you'll get better people, better places to live, and better from your leaders. You'll make the bad ones do uh, the things you want because you're informed and empowered and they still want your support. And you'll help the good ones uh, do things that you want because they'll know they have popular support when uh, when those ideas get out there that are often hidden by the mainstream media. So uh, check out manforwars.com. Actually, the site's currently down, so just type in Man for Wars and look at the descriptions and look at some of my other work um, for that. Um, but this video is called... Um, why did YouTube delete 27 of my videos in three days? Why did YouTube delete 27 of my videos in three days? Right, and um, and uh, I've got the I've got the emails here uh, from May 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, I've got uh, some Gmail accounts, and um, and and I've got a couple of different ones. Although I trust Proton Mail. Dot com more, um, you know, because Gmail, Google have done a lot more obvious censorship. Um, but I still have Gmail accounts, still have a YouTube account, and so on. And um, they took down 27 of my videos in three days because I get the emails to my Man for Wars Media at gmail.com account, which is what my YouTube channel is, right? And I've also had, you know, uh, about six YouTube channels deleted, right, in, over the course of my many years on YouTube. The first one, clearly copyright violations. The last five, it's just been censorship over whatever, right? Not Nothing obscene, nothing pornographic, nothing whatever. Just, we don't like you, you're getting popular, bam. Plus, I've been shadow banned and so on. I get people going, dude, you should have at least a thousand subs. Like, you're not a moron. You're pretty good at this. How come you've only got like 59 or 150 or 500 or whatever? It's like, yeah, well, they, they really don't like me. As somebody that wants to help us man up and as men and help women and children chill out, respect, communicate well, and teach kids to, and for us to locally win the offline info war by connecting with our neighbors as patriots where we live, connecting with each other, becoming friends, acting, sharing posters, flyers, DVDs with meet and greet tables or hitting the streets, and, and basically, you know, um, uh, organizing locally as opposed to being divided and conquered. We're not all, you know, uh, crazy, and they're not all sheep if we connect well in 3D. So and they don't like those ideas kind of getting out there, and that's sort of my bag. So um, I can see why I attract a bit more attention and it actually helps if they make it seem like I'm less popular and these ideas are less popular than they actually are because uh, I've tested them in a number of ways and they are really popular. But if people can go to my channels or go to my whatever and they say, oh, looks like not a lot of people like these. And they can do that not just for me, but for a lot of stuff. They can artificially inflate certain subjects or topics or people to make it seem like more people like them than actually do. And they can suppress certain subjects or topics or people to make it seem like less people like them they do. So that's, that's, something that, that, that's obviously, or, or arguably anyway, happening to me as well. So um, that's just sort of a broad look at that. But what I'll do is I'll show you, um, you know, well, yeah, I'll go through, uh, you know, what the videos were, and you can tell me um, if YouTube um, should have deleted these or not. So here's my manforwarsmedia at gmail.com account. There's the uh, email from uh, May 21st, also before that, May uh, 20th. And then um, and then another set from May uh, 22nd. So um, there it is. It says YouTube and then 18. There it is. Your video has been removed. And there's 18 of those from May 21st. Here, I'll try and move it above the cracked screen so you can see it a bit easier there. So there was 18 of those, right? And um, and then on May 22nd, there is nine of those. That little number nine beside the word YouTube, right? Those are the number of emails in that uh, email thread, right? And so here's another example. Your video has been removed from YouTube, right? And there is the number 16 there because there's the first one showing and the last one showing and then 16 in the middle. So that is the 27 videos deleted in three days, right? Now, um, I might have been the victim of uh, some censor who was hired by YouTube, who's like, well, I got to censor more than less. If I censor less and I get in trouble for not censoring something, then uh, I'm screwed. 
Um, so I'd, I'd rather just whack more than less, right? And, um, and even they may have a conscience. They might be like, eh, I might leave one or two up there because I censored so many that a couple of these are actually pretty good and I hope they get out to people and they help save our asses. Um, so you never know. But if their job is to, to, to censor, you know, patriots, people like myself, then, um, then, then somebody, I believe, I don't think this is just an algorithm. I mean, people think, well, there's the, the YouTube algorithm. No, I think they are, they, they, I think they've said they're hiring people, you know, specifically to look at channels and, 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 you know, use human intelligence as opposed to just the artificial intelligence to go, nope, you know, that, that's, that's, that shouldn't be here. That shouldn't be here. That shouldn't be here. So, um, I'll go over, you know, what these videos were and, uh, and you tell me you know, if this is reasonable censorship or not, right? Um, so, um, so the first one from May 20th, six days ago, it says here, um, raw video, Toronto healthcare district empty plus stop sketchy zombiosis to talk offline, six of six from April 7th, 2020. Right, so this was, I spent about four days in total um, looking uh, at uh, Toronto, the Toronto healthcare district, um, you know, three days in April and then uh, a day or so in May. And um, I didn't go inside the hospitals, in fairness, but I did go around the entire college and university uh, Toronto uh, main healthcare district, which is, you know, tons of hospitals there and, uh, and physiotherapy clinics and so on. And I was filming around the hospitals, filming the parking lots, showing how it's very quiet, not many people there, not a lot of tension in the air, parking lots, you know, half empty and so on. So there wasn't a huge crisis going on when it comes to an avalanche of COVID-19 coronavirus patients showing up, right? So that's something. Plus stop sketchy zombiosis, people acting sketchy sideways, can't really look at each other, make it hard to be nice and look at, talk to, listen to each other, kind of sketchy near strangers. Got to stop that too to make sure we can respect each other and communicate well and teach kids too. So, um, you know, also part of that process in general, right? Something that a lot of people know, but people have trouble talking about it because people feel embarrassed and lie and argue and keep bothering you and so on. So um, it's tricky business, but um, hey, um, shouldn't have, you know, should do our best to make sure poor uh, mentally ill homeless people don't get like that and the rest of us, right? And that's why good to be straight up guys. Hey, what's up, what's up? Not gonna bother each other. And girl, nice to the girls, nice to you. Hey, how you doing? Not gonna bother you. Don't worry about it, right? When you politely acknowledge each other, polite and brief Canadians or wherever you are, indicate you're not gonna bother each other as opposed to being on some sideways, sketchy, sheepish stuff with each other, right? Um, so anyway, that was the first video, um, you know, that was censored uh, as part of this purge. I've had others censored before, but this is a recent purge. Um, the next video here is 104-year-old um, survives COVID-19 or coronavirus. Just how deadly is this damn thing anyway? So this is the next video as part of this purge. And, um, and this was based on a, a Breitbart news article, uh, Breitbart, B-R-E-I-T-B-A-R-T dot com. Uh, do a pretty good job as a site that's, um, you know, not mainstream, a critic of the mainstream, but doesn't get really deep into red pill stuff. But they still do a good job, have a great reach and so on. And um, as the late great uh, founder of Breitbart dot com, Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. So it's important to keep an eye on the culture as well as the politics because the culture changes us with TV, so on, the way, things to say, things to do, and then they bring in political changes that affect everything we do, but they soften us up with the culture first. So Breitbart does a good job of examining politics and culture or pop culture, right? And um, they had a short kind of feel good, happy article here on a 104 year old World War I vet, I believe, um, who was apparently diagnosed with the coronavirus or COVID-19 in a nursing home. And then he was diagnosed as having beat it. He survived it. And I'm like, just how deadly is this damn thing anyway? How super infectious and deadly is this? We all got to be worried. We all got to lock everyone up. Don't leave your house. Everyone wear masks. And, and this is a super deadly infectious disease. It's going to kill millions of people. It's like, well, wait a second. Then how come you guys said, just wash your hands, stay away from people and stay home as your top of the line medical advice for this super deadly infectious disease? It's like, what the hell? What about vitamin A, B, C, D? What about zinc? What about quinine and tonic water? What? That's all you got for us with this sort of plague that's hitting the planet and that's going to kill millions of people around the world. All you got is wash your hands, stay away from people and stay home. Like people are full of crap, right? We need some better medical advice than that. Um, and um, anyway, but my point is, you know, um, you know, how, how bad could this damn thing be if this 104 year old tough old bastard, no doubt, served in the war and a veteran and whatever, but he's 104 years old. 
if he can get it and be fine, then uh, then then you know just how just how damn dangerous is this damn thing you know for for us or for anybody, right? So um so I, I made a vlog about that and they took it down, right? So there you go. So that's an example, right, of, of what what YouTube is censoring when it comes to to my content and uh, and I assume other content out there as part of this purge. Um, the next video is your video, and this is also from from uh, May twentieth, I believe, um, when they censored it. You know, otherwise these videos go back weeks. They go back, you know, since the beginning of April. And I've had previous ones deleted before, but this is all this recent stuff has to do with the recent coronavirus, you know, COVID nineteen eighty four pandemic, whatever, right? Um, so um, this next video is COVID nineteen eighty four. Video maker Sir High Impact Flix has the balls to locally win the offline info war, right? So there you go, and this is um about uh, uh, about uh, talented video maker, big burly badass bearded American dude, uh, Sir or High Impact Flicks. I call him Sir because heck, I can do a better job of finding of, of 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 calling people Sir when it comes to knighting people than the Queen. The Queen gave Jimmy Savile a Sir, Sir Jimmy Savile, and he, after his death, it was found out that he molested hundreds of kids, had sex with dead bodies, and while he was working as a popular British entertainer and children's entertainer. He was a real awful pedophile and pervert. So it, I can do a better job of, you know, of, 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 of ascribing the nobility, sir, to uh, people who deserve it uh, than, than the queen based on her track record, right? And that's just one example. But whatever, um, uh, High Impact Flix is a very talented video maker. He makes great videos, but online, we often just reach like minds. So as this, you know, lockdown was kicking off, nobody knew what would happen. Right. This is a few weeks ago. You know, people were freaking out about it. Like, oh, my God, are we ever going to get to go outside again? What are they going to do? How bad is this going to be? He was freaking out. He was like, I could make great videos and I could reach thousands of people. Um, but how do I reach all my neighbors who are more blue pilled? Right. And so he made a big eight and a half by 11 page flyer it says COVID-19 is a lie linked to like a CNN, you know, story, you know, that that was like, you know, admitting basically this is BS um, in one of their rare admissions. Um, and, um, and, uh, and, 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 and he went out to his local Walmart uh, around 9 30, 10 PM, sort of close to when they're closing. And he gave out a few outside, gave out a few inside, was kind of pushed back a bit, especially inside. Um, but, you know, I'm, I, I did a vlog saying congratulations, winning the offline info war is important, not just online, often censored, talking to like minds, not just protests, which are great to show strength in numbers, but often, you know, uh, uh, we don't connect, you know, we just connect with each other. We show strength in numbers. We feel solidarity. It's great to have a number of people who feel the same way, but often where we are, it's pretty isolated. There's cars driving by honking their horns. And um, the media, mass media especially, typically ignores them, so most people don't hear about them. So how do you connect with your neighbors? The offline info war. Meetings, you know, get together with other patriots, where you live, become friends, feel like acting, have meet and meetings, meet and greet tables, use posters, flyers, and DVDs to connect well with your neighbors in 3D, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and so I did a vlog, um, you know, helping him with his offline info war efforts, which I thought were commendable and courageous and, and, and worthy, but could be significantly improved on, right? Instead of a giant eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with just a little bit on it, make four to a page or six to a page flyers, cut them up, right? So they're smaller, easier to take, just a little piece of paper, right? I showed some examples of flyers that we'd used before successfully that were easy for people to take, had a little bit of information, uh, some websites on it, you know, and so on, so people could research on their own, especially when it comes to unfamiliar topics where you don't want to get into an argument with somebody who's like, oh, we all need to stay away from each other and wear masks, you're crazy. You know, it's like, no, 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 a lot of this is bull crap. You know, let's talk about it. No, no, I can't talk to you. you this coronavirus coming out of your mouth. Screw you, you should be at home right now. Like all that crap, right? So no, hold on, just take this, research on your own first if you'd like, right? Stupid laugh, smart, enjoy and share. No big deal, right? Um, and so um, I did a video basically, um, you know, uh, on that, commending him for his efforts, but, 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 you know, helping him and others improve, showing some examples of what's worked successfully with our group, Draw True Seekers back in the day to beat swine flu, did a great job, got along great with each other, got along with everyone else around us, even covered by mainstream TV news, where a good editor sent a, a camera a man and a, a nice woman reporter to hang out with us for two hours. 
and, uh, and we made uh, national broadcasts all across Canada, though we were pushed back a bit from the main national TV show and we were chopped up in the editing. But hey, we weren't just like, screw you people, you're Nazis. And then they were like, okay, get back in the truck, go home. Like, no, no, we worked with them as best we could because they reached out to us. We were classy, they were nice, we were nice. And then they submitted their report. And then as it made its way up the food chain, it was chopped up a bit, but a little bit still got out to millions of people across Canada in terms of a group doing this, that's what they're doing. Here's the questions they're asking. If it's just 30 seconds of a two and a half minute news story, it might kind of make other people curious or inspire other people to do that where they live too, right? So, excuse me. Um, But my point is that, you know, I did a, a vlog on it to kind of help him and others with their offline Infowar efforts and YouTube deleted it. So that's an example. And you can see, if you want to check my BitChute channel, you can see that, you know, it's not like, oh, you're lying. There must be something porn pornographic or evil or racist, sexist, phobic on it. It's like, nope, nothing like that. You can see the same videos that, I, as far as I know, because, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen, looked at them all recently, but as far as I know, the same damn videos are still up on my BitChute channel. So if you want to fact check any of these to say, well, I, mean, I don't know if that, maybe YouTube should have deleted that. You can look. It's mostly vlogs, plus a couple of others, you know, um, you know, videos as well from the street or from a protest or something of other people talking. But otherwise, it's mostly vlogs just like this that they deleted. And they might even delete this one, right? So who the hell knows? Um, now, um, it says here, uh, the next video they deleted was your video, Global COVID-19 Response, Unite Your People versus UN, WHO, Commie China, Stop Local Bitching and Snitching, was flagged to us for review. Upon review, we determined that it violates our guidelines, we removed it from YouTube. We know it's disappointing, blah, 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 the usual, right? And um, so this video... was basically a vlog saying, um, you know, uh, for the global COVID-19 response for everyone around the world, unite your people versus the UN, the World Health Organization and communist China and stop local bitching and snitching, right? Because typically wars unite people, right? People in a country could be arguing, people in Canada, in America, any country could be arguing, left versus right, black versus white, fat versus skinny, rich versus poor, men versus women, whatever, right? But as soon as that country is attacked, um, then everybody just sort of, go, oh, whoa, 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 calm down. We're being attacked. If we just keep arguing, um, then the people attacking us are going to kill us all or, or, or take us over, right? So we got to stop, you know, fighting with each other because we got to fight with them, right? And, um, and so I did a vlog about it. And then I did some stuff on the streets filming me talking about this in public and getting sort of the feedback from people, sort of some thoughtful looks and whatever is a uh, good point, right? You know, instead of just messing around and feeling sorry for ourselves, sheepish sideways stuff or sort of stupid stuff, like, no, we've got a serious threat from outside our country that should unite us as Canadians and should unite people in countries around the world as nationalists versus globalism. Because the globalist super rich evil people want to control international organizations to control us. We don't elect or unelect people at the UN and WHO and others they control them, and those groups are supposed to control us as part of their global government, government, global governance structure, right? And so um, I was like, look, we got to unite our people against this. And they built up communist China since the 70s to take over for America as the dominant uh, economic and military and whatever player in the world um, and, and destroy the U.S. and destroy the West so China could take over, right? That's why they built up China since the 70s. You can look into this for yourself, right? But, but the point is, um, America is not perfect, no doubt, and the West is not perfect, no doubt. But the ideals of America that the rest of the world aims for, the ideals of freedom and prosperity, we can be free to, to be us, to say and do what we want, to go where we want, to be cool, right? As long as we don't mess with people in a criminal way, right? Um, that's great. And prosperity, right? We've got more. We can always make more. You can be homeless, like basketball player Jimmy Butler was homeless, to now recently signing a $140 million contract for four years to play for the Miami Heat basketball team. It's like only in America, right? And, you know, some other countries that have those ideals, right? The ideals of freedom and prosperity are things that everybody likes, where you can do that, you know, with your life. Or the ideals of a, a republic with guaranteed rights that are given to us by God and guaranteed by the government and the will of the people and that nobody can take away, at least theoretically. Obviously, there's been some abridgments to that, but at least you can keep fighting 
for that. You can't just say, no, we can do whatever we want as a government because that's what our Constitution says. In America, their Constitution says these, these rights are guaranteed. They were given to you by God, and it's just the government's job to make sure nobody takes them away from you, including the government itself or people taking right, rights away from each other, right? Um, that's the government's basic job. So the ideals are great, and plus a democracy with the will of the people. So you can have the popular will of the people, and you can elect uh, leaders or customer service to represent you, um, you know, when it comes to the machinery of government, right? Um, those are great, right? But they want to replace all those. They want to take the communist China model that enslaved a billion Chinese, seems to be working there, especially with the new technology, and they want to export that to the whole world, and they're trying to do that with this stupid COVID-1984 pandemic hoax nonsense that we're all living through right now. So, um, so um, yeah, and plus, um, so we need to, we can unite our people against the UN, WHO, and communist China, which are attacking the entire world right now. And we can save the Chinese people, Hong Kong and Taiwan, uh, and the rest of the world from the Communist Party of China, uh, and, 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 and we can, and, and, and the UN and WHO, right? And we can stop local bitching and snitching, right? Bitching especially, right? Bitching, feeling sorry for yourself, being a mess or whatever, or complaining about things, or lying about things, or cry bullying people about things, right? Um, and, and also, um, in, 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 in capitalist economies, not perfect, you got to clean the corruption out of capitalism too, but in capitalist economies, um, things are better because you believe in abundance, in prosperity. We can all have more. Our kids can have it better than us. Our kids can have bigger houses, nicer cars, better standards of living, right? We've got technology, we've got resources, we've got the goodwill of the people, we've got ingenuity to come up with better and better ways to do cooler and cooler stuff. That's in a more free market capitalistic system. Under socialism or communism, it's not about an abundance economy, it's about resource scarcity, about sustainability, about we don't have enough, you know, so we don't have enough stuff, we always have to ration, you know, whatever. You can have a socialized healthcare system, hey, free healthcare for the first couple of years. After a couple of years, it's, well, now you get, we don't have enough, so you gotta pay $50 a doctor's appointment. You gotta pay $150 a physiotherapy appointment. You gotta pay a thousand bucks for an ambulance, right? So, because they're always talking about less and less. People have less and less in socialist and communist countries, you know, more leftist countries. So, um, and then there's a lot more bitching and snitching where people, instead of being, hey, empowering each other, nice to see you, yeah, it's great, you know, we, we can we can empower each other, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good, freedom, prosperity, looking forward to making more money, having more opportunity, you know, uh, going on more vacations, doing more cool stuff, and hey, let's work together, let's, let's, you know, let's make some money together, let's have some fun together. That's a more capitalist sort of uh, culture, whereas under socialism, communism, more bitching, snitching, more people picking on each other, you know, you can't, you know, uh, get a job or get a raise, or, 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 or there isn't an opportunity to sort of move freely and upward uh, mobility, right? There isn't that much. So people are picking on each other. And I visited uh, Cuba, for example, communist Cuba, as part of a vacation for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and I saw that. I saw the people there, nice people, lovely people at their core. But the culture wasn't one where they were opportunistic, right? Where they were like, well, I'm working as a bus boy now, but soon I'll be a waiter. And then if I invest my money, right, soon I'll own a restaurant and I'll hire bus boys and waiters. No, it's just sort of like, yeah, this is just what I do and whatever. And people pick on me because they're picked on by their boss. It's a lot more bitching, right? Uh, you know, bitching and beating people up as opposed to lifting people up, right? So you can beat that. And a lot more snitching, a lot more people, you know, ratting on each other on behalf of the government for bullshit reasons, right? Um, and so you can unite your people to stop that, you know, self-absorbed, you know, self-destructive crab bucket bitching and snitching um, that comes with socialism and communism. And yet they deleted it from YouTube. So that's another example. Um, the next example here is um, uh, community, uh, uh, community uh, it says here, save Nicole Sirotek, great Daily Mail story on COVID-19 murders. Share it, uh, push for more petitions. So this is also removed and this is, um, um, uh, uh, this is a story of, uh, uh, this is a little six minute video, right? Um, of uh, about Nick, nurse Nicole Sirotek. Now, this seems like a lovely young lady uh, from Elko, Nevada, a relatively small town in Nevada, um, and um, in the U.S. state of Nevada. And uh, and this was confirmed by the Elko Daily Free Press 
because they had a little story, uh, their local town paper, on a bunch of nurses going from Elko, Nevada to New York City to work at the epicenter of the COVID-19 crisis, right? Where there was the most deaths there. It's a war zone. People are dying left, right, and center. Other places, this super infectious deadly disease doesn't act like that at all. But in New York City, it's killing people left, right, and center, just whacking people everywhere. Hospitals, nursing homes, all of it's just madness, right? But other places, meh, doesn't do that much, right? So kind of weird. Um, but so Nicole Sirotek um, uh, courageously went to New York to work in that war zone. Very courageous for a wife and a mother of two, as found out later. Um, she might have also made some more money working there, but no issues there. If she's working in war zone-like conditions and leaving her relatively, um, you know, uh, peaceful uh, nursing environment in the small town of Elko, Nevada. Um, and she, um, Nicole Sirotek, would recommend you look up the name and, and look up, you know, more about her and share more about her. Um, because she, the reason I found out about her is um, she did a 24-minute Facebook live stream from inside a hospital in New York City, right? She's there, she's in her nursing gear, her nursing hat, her blue nursing outfit. Um, she's in a, a sort of a, a, a chilling area, you know, where you're a break area, right? Candy machine next next door, hospital noises, the boop, boop, beep of medical equipment and the announcement, you know, all that stuff, right? And she did a 24 minute live stream where she talked about how hospitals in New York were literally murdering patients, murdering, murdering, killing, murdering. You know, if killing's here and murdering's here, it's murdering, right? Um, and 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 she was talking about how, okay, so a guy's got a breathing tube, right? Patient has a breathing tube, uh, needs this tube to put air into his lungs. And they take the breathing tube out and they put a feeding tube in accidentally right? And then instead of air going into his lungs, it's macaroni and cheese going into his lungs. Oh, 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 dead. Another COVID-19 death, right? 13,000 bucks for, you know, according to regular American mainstream news, every time you diagnose a COVID-19 patient, 39,000 bucks the hospital gets um, if they were using a ventilator, right? That's the government sort of money. It's like, oh my God, here's the government money. You had a COVID-19 patient, 13 grand, you know, for, for that. And 39 grand if it was so bad they needed a ventilator, right? So um, hospitals, um, you know, that are largely empty um, and, and running out of money, and even a lot of people that have elective surgeries and so on are either discouraged from going or are too scared to go. It's like, ah, I've got to replace my hip every day. It's killing me. Oh, my God. But I don't want to go in for the surgery because I might get the COVID. Uh, so, you know, so the hospitals are just dying, right? They're laying off nurses furloughing, laying off nurses, doctors working from home, right? Empty doctors and nurses making TikTok videos. You know, I, you know, a big booty. Yeah, I got a big booty. And they're not just singing and dancing. They spent the time to blow up like surgical gloves to shove where their butts are to kind of do this goofy dance and a whole bunch of others. You've probably seen this. So, um, you know, my point with this video um, was uh, this Nicole Sirotek story was not being covered much, right? But then the first time I saw it covered by uh, a significant publication, at least in terms of the independent media, was the Gateway Pundit, thegatewaypundit.com. They do a great job on this. They're doing a great job exposing all the BS and hypocrisy and nonsense when it comes to this stupid COVID-19 pandemic. So I recommend thegatewaypundit.com as a good source to check. But they were the first sort of semi or, or sort of serious it's serious independent news organization that does a lot of their own good work plus a good analysis of the media um, they uh, talked about Nicole Sirotek's 24 minute Facebook live stream right when she talked about a bunch of other stuff there so I recommend you look it up she talked about this she talked about it. she felt like she was in the Twilight Zone she talked about it. she felt like she was in Nazi Germany um, you know because she was like hey they're killing all these Jews we should stop she talked about they're, they're killing a bunch of minorities Blacks, Hispanics, poor people off the street who come in. Uh, I think I've got a sprained foot. Oh my God, COVID-19 patient. Sh shove him on a, on a, a, in a, in a gurney. Put a ventilator in his mouth. Crank it up. Rattle his lungs to death. Uh, died, right? Because those people are easier to kill off. She called a couple of minority organizations in New York City. Hey, they're killing a bunch of black people. Do you want to help? And she was put on hold or hung up on, right? As, as part of, um, as, as they're kind of going along with the scam or they didn't want the heat, you know, for backing her up, right? And she's like, is everyone here a sociopath? Because she was like, you know, hey, uh, this is wrong. Uh, you shouldn't be using, you know, the EEG pads 
you know, to, uh, to, to, to put on a healthy person's heart. You know, when, when somebody has a heart attack or something, you put these electric pads in their heart and, you know, try and shock them, their heart back to life. If you do that with a healthy person, you might shock them to death, right? So she tried to stop that. And, and you know, the head of nursing was like, you know, I'm not going to help you. She's like, this nurse is doing this with someone who doesn't need this help. And the guy's just like shaking his head. People are just doing whatever they want in here, right? And, and, and so on. So, you know, she had to be kind of dragged away from that. And, and she said the other nurses see her own live stream. So I don't have to tell you the whole thing and you don't just believe me or disbelieve me. Um, she was like, the other nurses were, they knew she was a nice lady and a nice nurse, right? They were like, they're there, you know, it's okay. You're a great nurse. You can save everybody, you know? And she was like, no, but this is wrong. She goes, yeah, no, we, we agree, but you can't save everybody, right? So she was like, this is nuts. Is everyone here a sociopath, right? So. Anyway, without going on and on to her story, right? Um, you know, um, you know, the Gateway Pundit covered it, and I was looking for other sources who covered it because I wanted to get some backup credibility. And I did a little six-minute video where I, um, I, 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 um, I played four minutes of her plus two minutes at the end about what to do about her situation, right? Get the word out there, man up, you know, woman up, get the word out, petitions, White House petition, other, you know, whatever. Um, but what I did was I did a, a screenshot of me scrolling down this great UK Daily Mail article because the UK Daily Mail, to their credit, did a great job of writing a long article on Nicole Sirotek's Facebook live stream and the uh, COVID-19 murders at New York hospitals. So I wanted to get a copy of this before it's deleted from the internet. So I did a screenshot of it and I scrolled down that. Well, I had a little shot of her talking and then I had a little, the New York Post cover because the New York Post also covered it and, uh, and heavy, um, heavy.com, which is another sort of independent media organization, they covered it. Those were some of the significant media players that covered her story, right? And I wanted to capture that. And, um, and um, and then YouTube deleted it, right? So so um, so that's an example of, um, of 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 what they are deleting here, right? And you can see her video on YouTube. YouTube's whacked a bunch of copies, um, as far as I know. But the last one I saw had like a million views, right? Um, but they've whacked a bunch of other copies that popped up. So it's amazing. And and the the UK Daily Mail had had confirmed her identity checked her Facebook, checked her Instagram, had pictures of her, her and her husband, them doing fun stuff, her, 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 her you know, him with her kids, him talking about with her kids. Well, you left me with the cute little kids, but you know, you're, you're a real hero for going to New York, all this stuff, right? So um, I wanted to share that saying, look, don't just think this is just some crazy woman on the internet talking nonsense, right? You can fact check her story pretty well. And the mainstream media, including the UK Daily Mail and the New York Post have also covered her story which, you know, I know the media lies and yet we have to rely on them for some semblance of credibility. So it's a bit kind of this and that, right? It's like, well, you know, uh, I don't believe you. Well, it was in the Daily Mail and the New York Post. Well, but they lie. Well, okay, fine, whatever. You get my point though. Like when the mainstream media starts covering it, more people pay attention to it. And they don't just put stuff out there in a lot of cases that's, that's, that's you know, they wouldn't cover this if they didn't look into it a bit more is my point on that. So, um, Anyway, so YouTube got rid of that. Um, this next video is called, uh, your video, COVID-19 Plandemic, Communism, Customer Service, and Man, Will We, we Miss the Internet. Right, um, now, this is about, um, this is many weeks old, actually, um, but um, the COVID-19 Plandemic, and I spelled it this way. I was one of the first person to use the term Plandemic that I saw. Um, but then I saw people start spelling it a better way, P-L-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, uh, uh, as opposed to the planned, word plan, dash, emic. And so I started spelling it that way. So somebody came up with that better way of spelling it. But I was one of the first person to use plandemic as a term um, in, in response to this, as far as I could see. So, uh, you know, that's kind of cool. But then somebody spelled it better than me. So I started using their spelling. We're all contributing here. But it says here, COVID-19 plandemic, communism, customer service, and man, will we miss the internet. And this is just basically talking about how communism's coming here, right? That the bread lines, the socialism, the destroying small businesses, the putting us all on welfare. We all get government checks while the government buys, you know, failing businesses. You default in your mortgage, the government buys your house. And then we're all kind of, you know, slaves to them, right? Um, and um, customer service, right? Now you can't say this customer service is outrageous. 
I'm, this is not where I'm going to shop. I'm going to go to the local mom and pop. You can't say that anymore. They're out of business, right? Under communism, you wait in communist bread lines, right? Um, you know, in the extreme versions in Russia and China and Cambodia and Vietnam and other places, right? You don't have this. This is outrageous. I'm not shopping here anymore. I'm going to go to the next electronic store. You can't do that, right? Just like in communist countries, you wait for two hours once a week for your moldy bread, your moldy crappy meat, and your little crappy fruits and vegetables that are probably half rotted. And you don't be like, this is ridiculous. How could you, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Right? Um, <clears throat> and with all the mom and pops shut down and just Walmart and, uh, you know, other big box grocery stores or fast food chains open, what are you going to do? Right? So, so you know, we, we talking about how you can complain about customer service under communism or socialism. Um, you know, communism is just socialism in a hurry. So it's very similar. But, um, but talking about how that's, this is going to suck if we let this go, because even the normal things you're used to of, of, of not getting good customer service here and then shopping over there, you kind of have to just take whatever you get, um, you know, in, in socialist or communist countries, right? And, uh, and man, will we miss the internet in the sense of them saying, well, we're no longer in an economy where there's a bunch of um, abundance, as I spoke about earlier, but now there's scarcity. So when they say we don't have enough of this, we don't have enough of that, we don't have enough internet, um, then we're going to miss that, right? Right now we still, you know, have you know regular internet, um, but as this keeps going, they might say, well, we don't have enough internet um, because we don't have enough everything, right? Under under socialism and under communism, so um, so um, yeah, you're not allowed to use the internet that much. We don't have enough. We just need some for businesses, or the business is going to collapse. We need some for kids to use for school. So instead of being on the internet for as long as you want, all night and all day, um, you only get an hour or two a day, right? And you can only go to the government approved websites for the things you have to learn because the rest of that crap isn't that important. And maybe you can have a little fun time to play some video games with your friends or whatever, right? Like it's not here yet, but the possibility of it being here is definitely, you know, it's definitely possible, right? It's definitely possible um, under this system. So communism, customer service, and man, will we miss the internet as a bit of warning. And I thought, oh, that's going to get people's attention, right? And uh, and I'm sure it did, and I'm sure it will. But at the same time, YouTube deleted it, right? So um, <clears throat> the next video here is raw video, friendly Toronto anti-lockdown protest, May 9th, 2020, 500 strong, free to use, 10 of 13. So these are 13 raw videos from the May 9th, 2020, 500 strong Toronto anti-lockdown protest, right? where people were, were protesting against the COVID-19 lockdowns and shutdowns and all that, right? And they deleted it, and this isn't me. This is me interviewing about 30-something uh, 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 proud, polite, patriotic Canadians um, at this uh, Queen's Park rally from 12 to 3 on Saturdays that are still going on every Saturday from noon to 3, you know, 3 a.m., plus some people hang out after that. Um, and, uh, and so they deleted somebody else, some other people talking from the internet. Um, so that's an example of kind of what they're getting rid of. So it's not just my speech, but it's me just camera. Hey, why are you holding the sign? It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, some protesters, you know, they make noise, but they don't make sense, especially some leftist protesters. You can talk to them because I'm like happy to talk to them and other people are happy to talk to them. Say, look, if you make sense and I'll put it out there, it'll convince more people. So just, it's like, no, screw you, Nazi, whatever. Don't, no, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to yell when we're all supposed to yell. Or they'll say, oh, you know, just talk to our leaders. Or I'm like, no, come on. You're, 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 you're spending your time here. You know, you came out here to hang out for three hours. Why can't you just talk to me, right? But they can't. A lot of times they can't talk. So they can make noise, but they don't make sense. And so my point philosophically at the Toronto anti-lockdown rallies is to say, why are you holding the sign? If they say, what do you mean? I'll say, well, my philosophy is you're not just making a racket, you're making sense. You're not just making noise, you're making sense. You're not just making a scene, you're making sense. And if you're holding up that sign, uh, you know, you can explain yourself. You can explain why you're holding the sign and why you're taking the time because I'm trying to prove that we're not yahoos like uh, our Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, called a, a lot of us, right, the people that are against this uh, nonsense. We're not just bozos like another pr you know, mayor of a city called us, right? We're people that are, no, we, we, can, we can explain. We're not just, you know, commie zombies that just yell in unison, right? We are people that, that, that make sense, right? And, um, 
And, uh, and so I, I interviewed a whole bunch of people like that. And, you know, I got a whole bunch of smart stuff and I chop it up into half an hour or one hour or videos. And, um, and, and they want to censor those people as well. So that is part of what YouTube is getting rid of, right? I think the highlight video is still on there, but one of them was taken down, right? The 31 minute video, I believe, last I checked, is still on my YouTube channel. Um, but the uh, one hour and 22 minute video is not, right? Um, and that's a shame. So there's another example. So that was 10 of 13. This is 5 of 13 from the May 9th protest. And they've deleted, you'll see in a sec or in a bit, um, ones from the May 16th protest as well. Um, and then here's another one, COVID-1984. A man meets a man, his beautiful baby girl and nice wife equals death to the new world order. Right? And so this is a vlog um, basically talking about a day um, in my life in Toronto, right? Where um, I'm playing <clears throat> my song uh, as a counter psyop, counter psychological operation, or counter psyoptimist, because I'm I'm optimistic about it, and I do get a lot of great feedback from people. I get a lot of guys cool, girls cool, or people acting stupid with life being ignored instead of embarrassed or blamed or bothered back, right? So, you know, life doesn't suck, right? Um, <clears throat> although less of that latter is better than more, and that's something we should all work for. Um, but this 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 video, your video, COVID nineteen eighty four, a man meets a man, his beautiful baby girl and nice wife equals death to the new world order, is basically me going through, you know, a, a recent day in Toronto where I was playing my classic song, Death to the New World Order, which is kind of hard, right? Um, you know, the hook is a, an Eminem sample from his song, The Warning, which says, "Enough dirt on you to murder you. This is what the f I do." And then I scream, "Death to the New World Order!" Right? And and it's a yelly song you know, with a, with a heavy beat. And uh, my stomach hurt when I recorded it a few years ago um, from, from going so hard on this track. Um, but I'm playing that out of my cell phone and just showing and filming, in, in, you know, or in, in some ways, some days, right? Um, you know, or just, you know, sh talking about the response. And it's a bunch of guys who, like, they hear it and they man up and they go, oh, yeah, you know what? Seems pretty badass thing to do, especially with all this COVID-1984 pandemic hoax crap going on. Yeah, what's up, what's up, right? Or girls who are like, you know, vulnerable because confident masculine strength meets and confirms the same and then creates a safe space for and triggers confident feminine vulnerability like when you're doing manly stuff or whatever and girls are more feminine they try and charm you into being you know nice and they try and offer you some of their graceful girliness to to put you both in a good mood right um and so that's what i was getting i was getting a lot of guys like yeah what's up what's up yeah pretty badass i want to say what's up to a badass dude like i'm a badass dude right yeah and I had girls like you know you know, more uh, feminine and graceful and attractive, you know, who want to take a badass dude like me and uh, and charm them into paying attention to them by doing something worth paying attention to, right? So that's kind of broadly speaking, um, you know, what the, the, the counter-psychological operation was with respect to this song, right? Um, and then uh, a man meets a man, his beautiful baby girl and nice wife equals death to the New World Order. He's talking about how um, uh, just um, near uh, Jarvis and Church in downtown Toronto, Canada, I'm walking um, west towards Young Street, you know, for, for people that know, no, people that don't, don't worry about it. But the point is that <clears throat> I'm walking uh, towards um, a man and his wife and his baby girl, and I don't know, they're kind of far away, right? And uh, I see the guy, right? And, and you know, I look at him, and if he's getting on some sideways shit, you know, just avoid it or whatever, but he seemed to be a little bit nervous, like a lot of people are, you know, near each other, right? But then, you know, he saw me from a little ways away, right? And he's pushing a stroller right? And I noticed him, he noticed me, and he realized I wasn't getting on some sheepish, rude, sketchy, sideways, you know, stuff, right? And so he noticed me, and, you know, I wasn't doing it, he didn't have to do it, so I just politely acknowledged him, right? Oh, hey, what's up, what's up, right? And I saw him, and, you know, you know, like, a, you know, a, a hundred feet away, and he just kind of went, oh, okay, huh, and he exhaled, right? He was like, oh, okay. So, when I'm near you, I can just walk towards you, and I can just, you know, I don't have to worry about it, right? You're not doing anything stupid. I'm not doing anything stupid. We can just politely acknowledge each other, avoid each other, and as we get closer, indicate once again we're not going to bother each other. You're one of those dudes. Good stuff. And death to the New World Order is playing out of my breast pocket cell phone, right? Um, so um, I acknowledged him, you know, and whatever. And he was like, he kind of relaxed and exhaled, and he was pushing a stroller, right? And so, um, you know, and I, I walked towards him, right? And then as I got closer to him, 
he looked at me again, sized me up again, right? And I sized him up again. And I was like, cool, man, whatever, you know, nice day, fellow, you know, friendly Canadians, who cares? And so he just kind of acknowledged me and whatever and just went and then went back to thinking about something else and didn't worry about me, right? But I could tell he had something on his mind to make sure I was cool more than normal, right? And then right behind him and his stroller was, I saw this beautiful blonde baby girl, right? Little, like two years old, you know, two, three years old, you know, beautiful, tiny, blonde baby girl walking behind this man and his stroller and his very tall wife, right? Um, so, you know, this guy was about my height, average height, average weight, average build. His wife was very tall for a chick, you know, maybe our height or a little bit taller than us. And this beautiful baby girl was walking on the sidewalk, the same sidewalk that I was walking towards them on, right? And, uh, and, and mom was beside the little beautiful baby girl, um, trying to help her learn how to walk, right? So, so my point is I was walking towards the guy and politely acknowledged him and he's like, oh, okay. And he's just pushing the stroller. And he's like, okay, so around you, I don't have to worry about you. I've got my wife. I've got my beautiful baby girl here. Eh, okay, good stuff. I'm happy about that. Well, Death in New World Order is playing out of my breast pocket. But while we're straight up and cool, it's like, oh, you're one of those Death in New World Order guys. You're not some sheaver sideways, self-destructive, and then destructive to other people, you know, nuisance, nonsense guys. Cool, no problem, right? And so, um, you know, I walked towards him. I passed him in his stroller. I saw the beautiful baby girl on the ground. I saw the mom beside her. And I was like, ah, right? You know, <clears throat> you know, me and the guys don't bother each other. Don't scare no girls, right? So I leapt, I leapt, you know, on the sidewalk up on this little two foot high kind of ledge beside the sidewalk, which is kind of a wooden ledge with some dirt in it where you typically plant trees or flowers or something, right? I just hopped up on that ledge to my right to get out of the way of the beautiful little girl walking, right? And um, and she noticed and the mom noticed, right? And I was just like, oh my goodness, this beautiful little girl's in the ground near me, right? Like, you know, girls in general, right? They've got hips, they make cute little circles when they walk, right? It's more about the journey than the destination. It's a man, walks straight to Home Depot. I don't have cute little hips. I don't walk slower than guys. I walk straight to Home Depot and I can jump over a car on the way there if I feel like it, right? So generally, cool, straight up with guys, a little bit of room, girls, more room, tiny little baby, two, three-year-old girl learning to walk. Whoa, I'm out of here. Pew. A lot of room, right? So I jumped up on the ledge, got out of her way, was walking along the ledge. I looked down. The girl recognized this as a friendly action. The mom recognized this as a friendly action to get clear out of her way as she's toddling along the sidewalk, right? And um, so the little girl looked up at me with this little, you know, little baby look with the whole, ah, right? A little thoughtful, ah, with the big, beautiful blue eyes and curly blonde hair. Oh, nice man, get out of my way, sort of look on her face. And I looked down at her and I was like, wow, look at you, you, you know, beautiful young lady. You know, you're just glowing, walking around, making everybody so happy. Thank you. Right. And somebody said something like that to her. Right. And then um, I looked at the mom and the mom kind of looked at me, still a tall lady. Um, but the brunette mom looked at me. <clears throat> she kind of had a smile on her face. I'm not sure what to make of this entirely. But I said, afternoon, ma'am. Just a quick brief, whatever. Right. And she kind of smiled. And that was it. I kept walking on the ledge, you know, past them, hopped off the ledge. You know, another lady in front of me, a middle-aged black lady in front of me, she looked at me, I looked at her, kind of smiled like I do with the girls when they're feminine, friendly, just me and the guys, what's up, not going to bother each other, girls, hey, don't worry, I'm near you, I'm not going to bother you, right, girls make me smile since I was a kid, I even have a song written about it on my Silly Boys and Goofy Girls mixtape, right, which is classic, guys love it, right, want to make it happen, girls love sons in my pants, guys with big balls, something to do, but we'll hang out with them if they're worth hanging out with, doing something cool that's worth paying attention to, right? And so the guys love Girls Make Me Smile, the girls love Sons in My Pants as the two main songs that, that they love from that seven song album. And um, and that should tell you something. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, so I'm, this other lady's coming towards me and politely acknowledge her. And she had a look on her face, which I could actually read because we were straight up cool with each other, right? And, um, and I could read a look, which is a little bit sort of hurt and jealous and pissed that this doesn't happen more often with nice guys, nice to nice girls, and so on, right? But I could read all that, and I smiled, hoped it helped her feel better, and continued on my way. And then it showed the rest of the, you know, the, the vlog was about me interacting with different people the rest of the day. But my point about that vlog is meeting that man, um, his beautiful baby girl, and his nice wife is part of Death to the New World Order, um, because if we can do that and we can respect each other offline and communicate well and teach kids to, then we can connect well as neighbors, not just connect with strangers online 
leaving comments on videos or typing to strangers on Twitter or Gab or whatever, but actually have a community and communities where people can consistently show and get respect, communicate well, and then if they have something different or unfamiliar to say or do, or if they are different, it's not that bad when there is a uniform standard of being polite, patriotic people where you live like polite, patriotic Canadians. So that was my um, that was my point with this specific video when it comes to that and death to the new world order. And yet that was deleted by YouTube, as you can see. So. And this is just a vlog about it. This is just a vlog. I mean, this is all nonsense. Why even delete it? Who cares? You know, there's lots of nonsense on YouTube, right? But that's what they deleted because it can be helpful, right? Um, <clears throat> the next video here was a raw video, Toronto Healthcare District Empty plus Stop Sketchy Zombiosis Talk Offline, April 6th. Another video with the uh, empty Toronto Healthcare Hospital Districts plus uh, Stop Sketchy Zombiosis, People Sideways, Can't We Look at Each Other, just kind of worked up and... And, and, you know, worked up near you, but they don't want to look at you because what if you do something worked up and sketchy too? And then, you know, they can't really connect well. And, you know, you can't see how you feel. You can't see how they feel. You can't look at people's faces and tell and you don't care if you're making them put up with you or they're making you put up with them. You know, it's hard to do anything else, right? So, um, <clears throat> so uh, and plus the empty hospital districts. Um, this next video, your video, COVID-1984, Sir James Corbett shows how nations trap their citizens for globalist mafia boss torture, right? And um, there it is. Right? And this is a really short video. This is actually a really good vlog relative to my vlogs. My vlogs can go on too long sometimes, but hopefully there's good stuff in there. But my point is this is just like an 11-minute vlog on uh, a James Corbett video. Now, if you don't know James Corbett, he's a great guy. He's an expat Canadian now living uh, in Japan. And he's got the Corbett Report, C-O-R-B-E-T-T, report.com, which I strongly recommend you get familiar with and help other people get familiar with because he does an excellent job of very well-sourced and researched and articulated uh, uh, videos and, 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 uh, and podcasts um, that really explain kind of what's going on in the world, including um, really incredible stuff about this COVID-1984 pandemic hoax incredible stuff about who Bill Gates really is, who he was, how he came up, how he took over kind of global health care and, and what his plans are to vaccinate the whole world, right? Like he, and he, he's all researched, like lots of documents, lots of video clips, lots of this. Excellent job. So shout outs to James Corbett or Sir James Corbett, as I call him in this vlog. Um, <clears throat> and this specific video COVID-1984, <clears throat> Sir James Corbett shows how nations trap their citizens for globalist mafia boss torture, is basically um, commenting on his video about how you can be nationalists against globalism, because you're like, no, we need nationalism, which I am, but but it, it's not just you blindly support your own government either. It's just there's a bigger threat uh, that will destroy your government, which you won't be able to control if they do, whereas your government bad enough, pain in the ass enough, even if you elect them, it's still hard hard as hell to, 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 to control them. Um, but, but at least you've got that opportunity or a better chance to control your national government and your state or provincial or municipal government than you do a global government because you're one of, <clears throat> you know, uh, tens of millions of people in a country or, you know, millions of people in a, in a, in a state or province or uh, millions or thousands of people in a town or city right as opposed to one of seven or eight billion people or one of seven or eight billion ants in a global government structure right it's a lot harder to control right but my point is sir james corbett shows how nations trap their citizens for globalist mafia boss torture which is basically saying uh nationalism blindly especially is not the answer to beating globalism because all countries are doing with this COVID-1984 pandemic hoax lockdown, the shutdowns and lockdowns, is they are trapping their own citizens for the global government, right? It's like if you're worried about the mafia boss, right? Um, you know, the mafia boss is, oh my God, the mafia boss is gonna come kill me. It's like the nations are the mafia boss's henchmen, right? So it's like, ah, oh, the mafia boss is gonna kill me. It's like, yeah, but the henchmen are gonna capture you. They're gonna tie you to a chair. 
They're going to beat you up and slap you around, and they're going to hold you there for the mafia boss to show up and torture and kill you. And with the COVID-1984 pandemic hoax, that's what countries are doing to their own citizens, right? They've got the contact tracing, they've got the mass mandatory vaccinations, they've got the lockdowns, the shutdowns, the fines for going outside. You know, countries are doing the world government work for them. So you can't just blindly support Canada or America or the Philippines, where I've heard, um, you know, you're only allowed out once for two hours a week and you need a special permission slip from the police or whatever. And if they catch you with it, you know, with that, with being outside without that specific, you're allowed out on Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. to do your grocery shopping. If you're outside your house any other time after that, then they, they can throw you in jail, you know, or fine you in a draconian way, right? Um, so nations are currently trapping their people for the giant global spider world government. And I talked about how James Corbett made that plan brilliantly to say you can't just be nationalists against the world government because by supporting your countries, you're supporting the people trapping you in your own country for the bigger globalist world government spider to eat later, right? So we've got to fight that as well. Um, and so um, I think those were all on May 20th. And then uh, from May 21st, that's, what, that's when they were all deleted, right? And then from uh, May 21st, here's another one, COVID-1984, Patriot porn, or COVID-1984 Patriot porn. Don't spread, quote, bioweapon disinfo, and then expect, quote, Patriot protests, right? So this was another video deleted, again, just a vlog. And um, this vlog um, was basically saying, yeah, don't spread bioweapon disinfo, then expect Patriot protests. And this is about the work of uh, Sir Alex Jones, who with his team at Infowars.com has done some great historic work. But I only agree with about 80% of what he says, you know, the other 20% happy to man to man disagree with him or anybody else and have that conversation about why I think the logic uh, and analysis or facts uh, that, that I'm presenting are better, right? But the 80% is good, right? But that's most people, even me, 80% is probably good. The other 20% could be improved on, right? So it is what it is. But um, basically there was a lot of talk about how this is a bioweapon. It came from the Wuhan lab. Uh, Jones and others, you know, in fairness, Mike Adams from Natural News and others, talking about this is a bioweapon. It came from the Wuhan lab. Um, you know, it's super deadly. It's four different viruses stitched together. It's gonna kill millions of people. We need to be whatever, oh my God. And I was like, this is bull crap, right? It was bull crap. Right at the beginning, I was scared too, right? I, mean, I wasn't scared, scared. I was just like, all right, time to just eat healthier than I've eaten. Time to, you know, you know, take more vitamin C, get more vegetables, look up solutions to this, get more zinc, get more quinine. Like I just wanted to be healthier than normal because I thought, well, if this is a nasty flu, bioweapon or not, then I at least want to make sure my immune system is healthy. So if I do run into it, I can beat it, right? But and this is clearly not a bioweapon, right? That is patriot porn, right? Now you can be like, well, the study, the study from scientists in India, and they have some smart scientists in India. Yeah, and they work for the government, like most science does today, right? So they could just make up a study or come up with some bullcrap study. And they could say, oh, it's four different viruses stitched together, HIV delivery system, it does this, it rots your brain, it rots your balls, it rots your kidneys, it, it, it unties your shoes, so you fall on your face and break your nose. like. They could just make all that up, and I think they did, because this thing does not act like that. Now, could be I'd be proven wrong later, possibly, but I think a lot of that was patriot porn, right? This is a giant um, plan, um, and um, and 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 as part of this plan, um, you know, there may not even be a virus, which I I I'm, I don't think there is in many ways, right? David Ike has said it, and I don't agree with everything he says either, but you know, he's made some good sense about this. They had the event 201 which is Bill Gates, the Johns Hopkins University and World Economic Forum uh, uh, tabletop exercise meeting in October of 2019, where they said, what if there was a global pandemic? What if there was? What if it came out of pigs in Brazil, right? As opposed to bats in China or whatever, right? What if there was, what would we do? That was in October, 2019. And then in November, 2019, this thing started. So they basically had, you know, um, you know a global meeting uh, sponsored by these big players, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Johns Hopkins University, which still keeps track of the global COVID-19 death numbers, and the World Economic Forum to basically say, hey, you know, get get all the businesses to stand down. Get all don't don't get the actuaries and the insurance companies and all those people kind of bitching about this. 
you know, chill out, whatever. Those three main groups, along with many others, right? But those three main groups had the Event 201 tabletop planning exercise, where they got the major healthcare uh, uh, industries in the world and uh, major healthcare leaders uh, from different countries around the world together in October 2019 and said, what if we had a huge pandemic that swept across the world? What would we do? How would we react to that? And then a month later, bam, happens. Starts in China. October, Event 201, November, you know, Wuhan virus, China virus, coronavirus, COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 kicks off in China. November, December, some controversy around it. January, start thinking this might hit the West. So no, don't, don't close the borders. Don't cancel flights. That's racist. Other people, no, we have to. This is crazy. We can't let people come from a virus-infected country to ours. Doesn't matter where they where it is. You know, it's crazy. And then all, and then February, and, oh, we waited too long. Now we have to shut down, lock everything down. Oh, great. Nobody can go anywhere. And then March, April, okay, okay. This, is this really bad or not? It's killing a bunch of old people in nursing homes who you're not allowed to see anymore. So they might just be whacking people in nursing homes, right? They have old people dying misattributing deaths to COVID-19, comorbidities, people with cancer and, and heart disease and so on. They die, but they check their blood. Hmm, might be some coronavirus in here. They may have had a flu sometime in their life. And so, yeah, it might be some coronavirus goo in here. So let's call it a coronavirus death, blah, 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 blah. So, and then April, and then May, here we are in May uh, of 2020, right? The, the end of May, right? It, it's currently a May 26th today right 2020 and it's like okay this is a bunch of bullshit right um and and so there may not even be a virus right it is it, it, sort of you know one of my contentions this is all part of a drill and um and the reason is like david ike says and, and, and others and i sort of come up to this conclusion as well if they really released a bioweapon right if they released a bioweapon um then they wouldn't be able to control it right what if it killed some of the people they need to, to pull off this bullshit hoax, right? So they could have documents out there and studies out there from different universities that say, well, we looked at this under an electron microscope that you can't have access to or afford, and we saw it super crazy, deadly, oh my God. How come it doesn't act like that? How come it doesn't, how come you can go outside, you can go to people, 2,000 people at Walmart, you know, 500 or 1,000 people at a protest, you know, 5,000 people at a park, you know, recently in Toronto, everybody's fine. You know, this is not some super deadly bio. People should be going home and throwing up their internal organs, right? Um, so a lot of that was Patriot porn. And because this is part of a plan, they will have information for everybody. They'll have information for mainstream, blue pill people. They'll have inf information for independent media people, right? Next level. They'll have informa information for red pill people or conspiracy theorists. They'll have information for botanists. They'll have information for horticulturists. They'll have, they, they, they've got different things for everybody to play with when it comes to this, right? And so um, I think the bioweapon is, stuff is disinfo. And I said, don't spread bioweapon disinfo and then expect patriot protests, right? Because if this is a super crazy bioweapon, and even Alex Jones has said, and I don't agree with this, I think, this is, and he, I think he's basically stopped saying it because it just didn't make any sense. If this is a super crazy bioweapon, then why are you going to a protest in Austin, Texas, with you know, 200, 300 other people there, right? Not wearing a mask, just wandering around with everybody, just going close to people. And this is crazy, freedom, 1776, we'll rise again, this is nuts. And then going home to your wife and three kids. How can you do that? Wife and four kids, I think, right? How can you do that? How can this be a super deadly bioweapon? And then you go to protests and you're not wearing a mask and you're against all this bullshit. You're out in the sun. You're, you're stimulating your immune system with vitamin D from the sun and fresh air and social life, not socialist distancing. Don't see people anymore. The worst thing for your health causes depression and suicide is to not be social, right? Um, but you're doing all this and yet it's a super deadly bioweapon, right? So it doesn't make any sense. So I won't go on and on, but basically I said, you know, COVID-1984, patriot porn, right? Don't spread bioweapon disinfo and then expect patriot protests, right? And um, and what happened? YouTube deleted it. So there you go. Um, here's another one. Raw video, COVID-19 response, proof offline manpower is an essential service, number 16 of 32, right? And so basically, um, this is a, a raw video, me filming on the streets of Toronto as the lockdown was happening, 
um, in, in March and then a a in April in Toronto, I was going around filming, um, talk, filming um, what was going on, filming things shutting down, filming Bay Street, the financial district in Toronto, similar to Wall Street, New York, right? Shutting down. Just, okay, so this is closed now. This is closed now. Next day, this is closed now. This is shut down. You can't sit there anymore. Yellow tape is there. The Starbucks, okay, you can't sit there anymore. Okay, now they closed it entirely. So, and I was walking around filming all this stuff. And I was proving that offline manpower <clears throat> is an essential service, right? Basically, <clears throat> Offline manpower, making sure you're cool, other people are cool, where you are and where you live is cool is an essential service. If you're the kind of guy that can do that, then you're an essential service, right? And then the girls, they can be cool. Men want to feel useful. Women want to feel special. They can put us both in a good mood, make babies, no big deal. And then people can do whatever they want, right? They can be rich, poor, fat, skinny, black, white, funny, you know, not uh, sane, crazy, smart, stupid right? They can work any job they want, but the point is you get the basics right. Men make sure they're cool, other people are cool, where they are, where they happen to be, and where they live is cool. And that's it. You're done. So you could be a homeless guy, you could be a rich guy, you're, you're not just a crappy guy. You're not a crappy guy, uh, you know, and crappy for where you live. And girls, you know, put us in a good mood, make babies, right? Bad mood, help them fix it. Good mood, hey, nice to see you. Nice to see a girl, don't always see a girl, some other things to do whatever, right? And then people can just do whatever, right? But you get the basics down, right? And so I have a whole bunch of videos proving offline manpower is an essential service, saying this as raw videos in public, saying this with a bunch of cop cars around, cops around, cop cars around, filming, saying it, whatever. And I'm like, you know, do the cops want some help with the purge? You know, do, 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 you know, as things get worse and worse and, and people act crazier and crazier as, as seemed to be happening before the lockdowns were eased more recently, right? You didn't, nobody knew what was going to happen, right? Uh, you know, do you want to help old ladies cross the street? Do you want to stop them from getting mugged from their groceries, right? Do you want men to help other men man up, to help other men man up, to help other men man up, to help women and children chill out, to help have each other's backs in this uncertain, unstable environment, right? And I was out there getting the feedback from people in a variety of ways and documenting it, right? With, with my, my different video cameras, my GoPro or my little Sony, right? And um, so yeah, offline proof, offline manpower is an essential service, right? It is essential, right? I'm in front of the Dollarama dollar store at uh, Parliament, um, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, on, on Parliament Street in Toronto, right? There's a bunch of boxes there that are just, you know, on the sidewalk, right? There's some cute girl walking towards me, right? I see her, she's a nice girl, acknowledges me and, you know, sees the boxes. And I was like, all right, screw this shit. And kick all the boxes out of the way with my big old man foot. And just bam, bam, kick them all out of the way, stupid boxes, Galloway, right? And then, you know, the girl's walking towards me and sees that and she smiles, she relaxes, sees me big manly thing, kick all these stupid boxes out of the way. And then she's, you know, is cute and vulnerable and feminine. I smile and then she walks by me, <clears throat> whatever offline manpower is an essential service, right? So, um, so I, I, anyway, they, they deleted one of my videos from that. Um, they deleted another video. Uh, that was eight of, so 16 of 32 is gone. Eight of 32 is gone. All these videos of the shutdown in Toronto happening um, day after day that, uh, that I filmed, right? Here's another video, COVID-1984, O Canada, Rebel News, True North News, and spencerfernando.com attacked symptoms, not cause, right? So this is another video deleted. This is a long vlog. Which is about, I think about an hour and a half or so, where um, I went over that day's rebelnews.com website and that day's true north news or tnc.news, I think is their website, and that day's spencerfernando.com website, right? Mostly Rebel News, because people know Rebel News, Ezra Levant, David Menzies, Sheila Gunn-Reed, a bunch of great folks there. And I am not attacking them. I am not attacking them, right? I think Rebel News does excellent work. I, I even interviewed David Menzies for about three minutes at the May 16th, 2020 uh, Toronto anti-lockdown protest or rally or Great Canadian House Party, as I like to call it, because it's not angry, miserable people. It's very family friendly, bring your family, friends, neighbors, like it's, 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 it's a good time, but whatever. Um, I, I like and respect Rebel News, right? I like and respect True North News. I like and respect Spencer Fernando and the work he does at spencerfernando.com, right? But 
as I say here, they attack symptoms, not cause. Because especially in Canada, less red-pilled than America, and I look a lot of American stuff too, um, you know, um, th they're, they're attacking the internal logic of the COVID-19 pandemic as put out by the government and echoed by the mainstream media, right? So when they say, I'll need to wear masks, you know, then, then these guys will say, hey, how come you're not wearing a mask? As opposed to, why do we all need to wear masks, right? Who's behind this, right? If you want to, you know, uh, 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 um, you know, beat the tree of tyranny, don't just hack at the branches, strike at the root, right? So I was going over a bunch of articles on Rebel News, or at least, you know, or not even articles, but headlines of stories on Rebel News and talking about how they'll deal with this and they'll expose some good quality hypocrisy, but they won't talk about why it's happening. And I did the same with True North News and SpencerFernando.com because that's what they do for a Canadian audience that's largely less red-pilled than Americans, right? And, um, and they do a great job, but they, they don't get into why. Basically what I mean is, you know, there's, um, there's the mainstream media. If you're in America, right, you've got, say, um, you know, NBC News or CNN, mainstream media. Then you've got Breitbart.com, good critics of the mainstream media. Then you've got Infowars.com, good critics of nationalism versus globalism, super rich, evil, eugenicist crazies. You know, central banksters print money from nothing, want to use it to control the world. You know, they've got enough money, they print it, and they use it to buy and bribe and corrupt and blackmail, you know, everybody to try and increase their control over the world by controlling the money supply. So those are the different levels, mainstream, and then independent media, and then red pill media or conspiracy theorist media, whatever, right? But if it's not just conspiracy theorizing, like they're there might be some satellites or Martians on the moon or something, but it's, if it's actually based on, you know, documents and history and so on and just stuff that's, you know, that's, that's you know, that's verifiable, but it's just not, uh, it's not, uh, it's impolite or impolitic to say, um, then they're, they're, they're worth respecting, right? Um, and so that's what I mean, is that Rebel News will talk about how, you know, the green energy thing is whatever, it's not good, right? This green energy thing doesn't work. Greta Thunberg is a hypocrite, right? She, you know, says we all have to be green, but then she, you know, took a boat here and she needed 10 people or six people to run the boat. So that's six more people than she needed. And then she took a private airplane back when she could have just flown back and forth, saved money, saved carbon emissions or whatever. And it's like, okay, fine. So that's some good hypocrisy in the, in the, in the mainstream Greta Thunberg story, but they don't go into UN agenda 21 or Agenda 2030, the UN's plan for sustainability, which is to basically herd all of us into giant domed compact cities and say, we're bad for the earth. We all have to use less and less. So we have to be in these compact cities and, uh, and, and, and you know, live in little mud huts or little crappy little apartments and, uh, and all ride bicycles or all take no more your, of your own cars, just driverless Uber cars that are sort of computer programmed and they only take you to where you're supposed to go. We've got to use less and less so that the rich people can have the earth, right? Because we're all bad for it, right? And this is, the UN has their own websites on this, their own Agenda 21 plans, right? Agenda 2030 plans, uh, the Club of Rome, giant rich guy think tank, right? Um, you know, came up with this sort of uh, global warming or climate change, um, you know, uh, idea to make, they say, well, wars help unite people um, you know, to, 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 you know, to, um, to, to get behind their government. How do we get behind a world government? Well, you make man himself the enemy of earth. So we all unite to attack ourselves and our lifestyles. And you had it too good. Your house was too big. Your clothes were too nice. Your car was too nice. And, uh, and the earth is going to be, the weather's going to be bad in 20 years. They had global cooling in the seventies. That didn't work out. They had global warming, you know, in the nineties or, or 2000s. Uh, you know, uh, mid late 2000s, that didn't happen. Now it's just climate change, right? But either way, it's our fault. We're bad. So we attack ourselves and we police ourselves on behalf of the global government. So my point in saying that is that they'll talk about how, you know, based on this sort of mainstream understanding, you know, uh, you know, uh, this story is bullcrap or the media's presentation of the story is bullcrap, but they won't talk about why there's all this bullcrap put out there. And so I did that with Rebel News, True North News, and SpencerFernando.com 
and they'll do a great job criticizing China, right? But they won't talk about how China was set up by the UN to, 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 to develop their communist um, technocracy over there to uh, experiment on a billion people, figure out how to perfectly control them, facial recognition, tracking, social credit scores, and so on, and then export that system to control the whole world. They'll talk about how Chinese influence, Communist Party influence, Confucius Institutes, you know, maybe some corrupt sellout politicians who got some Chinese investments or Chinese money, you know, whatever. You know, they'll talk about that, but they won't talk about the bigger picture. So that's what I mean when I say they attack the symptoms and not the cause, right? Um, when it comes to these great Canadian news organizations who I'm not faulting entirely for this, Although I do think that once you're once you once they once they point out that you know um, you know the government and media are lying to us and working together to lie to us, then once that's kind of clearly established, then you need to go a level further to really beat this tyranny. Otherwise, as part of this process, you know they'll push, um, you know they'll push, they'll they'll push wittingly or unwittingly, they'll push for things that are bad for us, right? So. If, if they don't expose that this whole thing, this COVID-1984 pandemic is just a total bullshit hoax, then they'll say, oh my goodness, we didn't do enough. We didn't lock down fast enough. We don't have enough masks. We don't have enough protective equipment. You know, we're not doing enough. Everyone needs to stay home. This is super dangerous. The government's just letting us die um, because they're not giving us enough masks. They're not closing the borders. They're not stopping flights from affected areas like China and Italy. So, you know, because the government is so irresponsible, we, as Rebel News or Spencer Fernando or True North News, we demand that the government do more to lock us down to protect us from this super deadly virus. As opposed to exposing, this is all bullshit. It's part of a giant Event 201 drill. And the evidence is that if this is a bad flu. It's it's just a bad flu. It's not even that bad, right? Um, so that's my point. That's why I brought this up, right? Not to crap on the good work they do, but to say this good work should lead more to an understanding of the bigger picture. Otherwise, you know, you're just stuck in the mainstream logic where the government mainstream media says this, these people criticize it, and they criticize the internal narrative of this mainstream narrative, but they don't explain why all this bullshit is happening. And that's something that we need to get to. So I thought that was super important. And, uh, and I did a good job of analyzing story by story about how Rebel News and True North News and SpencerFernando.com, mostly Rebel News, but I, I did look at True North and SpencerFernando.com, who I recommend. I recommend. But I recommend them. Uh, I recommend you also look deeper into things at places like CorbettReport.com or Infowars.com uh, and, and so on, or, or, or Band.video, which has a bunch of great videos on this to, 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 to kind of look into more. Because otherwise... Like I said, they will be trapping us. They'll just be saying the government didn't do enough to protect us, so we all need to wear masks and just constantly breathe our own carbon dioxide, constantly trap whatever crap is in the air in there, whatever particles and filters and viruses and dirt, and then just constantly breathe it in all the time and say, no, they're not saying we need to wear masks, so we do it. we're saying we do because the government and media are lying to us and they're not trying to take care of us, so we're saying we need to. It's like, no, you got you to expose, you got to go deeper than that. And that's my concern that I want to share. And YouTube deleted that. So that's an example. Um, this next one here, raw video, COVID-19 response, proof offline manpower is an essential service, 10 of 32. Again, I'm just breaking down sort of shots of offline manpower being an essential service. That was an essential service. I went here and there. I went inside and outside and, and every place. And, you know, as things were shutting down until they completely closed, I was there, right? And I was filming it. And I was like, no, I'm an essential service. You want, you want, you want guys to help us deal with whatever the hell this shit is? Whatever the hell this goddamn stupid shutdown, lockdown, plague, you know, everything's going to be all screwed up. Do you want that? Do you want men to help us deal with this? We're all under attack. Either this virus is going to mess us all up or, 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 or people, crazy, normal people are going to go crazy and crazy people are going to go crazier. Do you want to get hit with a rock in the head while some crazy person runs off with your groceries? Or do you want offline manpower to be an essential service, right? Do the cops want some help with the purge or do they want a whole bunch of people, crazy people throwing rocks at them while they try and arrest one of them, right? And so, you know, I was, I was making that point, but they've deleted a bunch of these as well. Right? And I have the offline InfoWar proof of that 
which is now gone. Um, the next video they deleted here, Kurodu, are they just killing seniors in nursing homes? Connect the bloody dots. This is a fairly recent vlog that I did. Just, um, you know, you know, maybe a week ago or so. Um, and, um, and, um, and, and this is where I just say, yeah, you know, this started off with the first thing they wanted to do was lock down the nursing homes. Lock them down, lock them up. Nobody's allowed to see uh, people in nursing homes anymore. You're not allowed to see your family. You're not allowed to see your auntie. You're not allowed to see your uncle. You're not allowed to see your grandparents. You're not allowed to see your parents, right? Um, that was the first thing, you know, worldwide. Lock down nursing homes. It's like, what the hell? It's like, the only thing keeping them alive is us visiting them. Yeah, we know that, you know? So um, basically, I just said, connect the bloody dots. And I went through this. And I went through, um, you know, uh, uh, Governor Cuomo um, in, 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 in New York and his approach to them and bringing in the COVID-19, people who've tested positive for COVID-19, getting them in nursing homes, supposedly infecting a bunch of other people. Oopsie, bureaucratic oopsie or bullshit. They just use that as a story to say that's why they died when they're really whacking old people in nursing homes, right? They're whacking isolated seniors. You know, it's some of the, the worst standards of care in there, right? Nursing homes are famous for this, for underpaid staff, undertrained staff, for old people with dementia and people paid minimum wage who have no patience, right? Recent video came out of that 20 year old black guy beating up, uh, you know, and filming and beating up an old man. Before that, he filmed and beat up an old lady and they didn't report him. It was the second time at that hospital that some, you know, patient under his care had significant injuries and he just beat him up and then convinced the people there that they that they fell, right? So, you know, and, 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 and on and on and on. So, um, you know, and there's more evidence, right? But basically in Italy and other places, you know, they've got people in nursing homes, they're old, old people who are not in nursing homes. And there are many old people who are not in nursing homes. They're either living happily on their own as an older, you know, retired couple, you know, grandparents, people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, old people who are not in nursing homes are not dying from the coronavirus. They're not. Whereas old people in nursing homes, like 25% of them, are dead from this stupid coronavirus, especially in liberal, leftist, socialist, communist, and terrorist countries, right? Places like New York, California, or California, right? Or Italy used to have a nationalist in Salvini, then switched to a leftist communist government, right? China, right? Iran, right? Places that really want to crack down on their own people need to have a high corona death count, right? Places that don't want to crack down as much in their own people, places like Idaho or Alberta, right? Those places, no. But places that really want weak people, easy to control, like a lot of socialists, communists, leftists do, people are dying left, right, and center. And when they close the nursing homes and they said, that's it, you know, you can't visit nursing homes anymore, you can't visit grandma, you can't visit grandpa, you're not allowed to visit them anymore, no one's allowed, to, you can't come because you're going to kill them that's when they could kill them easier, right? Whereas, as I said, all the old people, right? The old people in my neighborhood, the old people in Toronto, the old people in other places, all over the place, the nice old people going to Walmart, doing their shopping, going to the grocery store, doing their shopping, those, and or old people with family members, right? Like maybe you, maybe, maybe you say grandma, grandpa, you know, you're living with us or my parents, my elderly parents are living with me, right? So because of this, you know, COVID-19, you know, pandemic, whatever, um, you know, bullshit, right? Don't leave the house. I'll take care of the groceries. You're vulnerable, so don't leave the house. Yeah, you're going to Walmart. You're going to the grocery store. You're near you're coming back. You were there with, you know, 100 people, 1,000 people. And then you're coming home. How come you're not killing your mom? How come you're not killing your elderly mom? How come you're not killing your elderly dad? How come there aren't just pe old people dropping dead in houses, not nursing homes, but houses all across Canada, America, Europe, the world? Why not? Why not? Because they're just killing people in nursing homes. When they said, shut them down, no one's allowed to visit, and we're going to either let them die or kill them, right? So, um, and I connected a bunch of other bloody dots, including the Nicole Sirotek story and so on and, and, and whatever. So that's why. You know, I, I, I made that vlog and it's still up on BitChute, but YouTube deleted it, right? And um, here's another one, your your video, uh, great interview, excuse me, 
Dr. Shiva and Anomaly on COVID-19 and the History of How Science Was Corrupted. This is a great two-hour um, interview with Dr. Shiva Ayadurai, who's a, a badass dude. Um, and um, and uh, an Anomaly, a young uh, badass dude who's does great vlogs and, and is known in sort of the, uh, the the red pill community. He also raps as well, right? And um, this is basically a great chance for a young dude, smart young dude, but not nearly as knowledgeable as MIT, PhD, and uh, an immune system specialist and, and physicist and bioscientist, Dr. Shiva Ayadurai, Shiva, S-H-I-V-A, and then Ayadurai, A-Y-Y-A-D-U-R-A-I. This is a great two-hour interview where, um, because, you know, when you're smart, it helps to have somebody there be an interlocutor, interlocutor to help you kind of moderate your intelligence and your explanations to make them accessible for everybody, right? And Dr. Shiva is very smart. And Anomaly is not stupid, but, you know, he's smart enough to know when to sort of interrupt, when to sort of ask for clarification for the audience watching this video. So this was a great two-hour interview that I got from Dr. Shiva's uh, website, um, which was... Um, uh, a Facebook live stream, which is then put on YouTube or wherever. And, uh, and I posted a, a copy of it on YouTube, which seemed fine, right? Um, other people have done stuff like this. And, um, and YouTube deleted it. And he talked about how the history of science got corrupted, because science used to be tinkerers. It used to be a guy in his garage coming up with the windshield or coming up with the television, right? It was, it was scientists in their garage. Now, over the last, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, right, um, uh, big science, right, big academia, uh, big government, and so on, they've convinced us that you can't be an inventor, a tinkerer at home anymore, right? Everything has to come from the government. You need government grants. You need government funding. You need university approval and support to do anything or make anything, and that's total bullshit. Dr. Shiva invented email, the modern email confirmed by the Smithsonian Museum as, yep, we got all the original documents, we looked at it, we fact-checked it. This kid really did invent email that we know today, just looking at the old secretary's in and out box and, and so on on her desk when it comes to messages that were coming and going or storing things and coming up with an electronic version of it, right? That was done independently. The windshield wiper was done independently. The television was done independently. And then big companies came and stole it, right? RCA came and stole the television idea. He fought him in court for a few years, right? And then one eventually admitted it, right? And so um, the history of how science was corrupted. Now they say you can't just invent stuff anymore. You can't be a tinkerer in your garage. You can't be independent. We need to give billions of dollars to groups like NASA, you know, the space group in America, right? And then if we give them billions and billions or trillions of dollars and they do tons of research and have all their top scientists and so on, then you know what? In a few years, they'll give us a microwave oven or they'll give us a cell phone. They'll give us something from all that research. It's like it's bullshit, right? That's not how, you know, true inventors and scientists work, right? And even Dr. or President Dwight D. Eisenhower, right? In his final farewell speech from office in 1961, after being president for eight years, right? In January of 61, he gives the last speech. It's known as the military industrial complex speech because in that speech, he says, we must guard in the councils of government against the unwanted rise in influence of the military industrial complex, right? And he talks about how, you know, after the, the World War II and, uh, and, and heading into the Cold War with Russia, the military was taking more and more money and getting more and more power and the companies that were feeding that were getting more and more money and power to keep growing, right? So they were starting to take over the government. So Eisenhower, in his last speech, talked about the military-industrial complex. But what a lot of people don't know, and I've read the original speech, and you can go to Eisenhower, type in Eisenhower military-industrial complex speech, and go to the original, go to the Eisenhower Presidential Library website. You can see the original speech with this underlined this and so-and-so that and things highlighted to you know, talk to, to indicate how to emphasize them when giving this talk to the nation. He also says, while we should show a lot of great uh, respect for research and science, we must understand that, you know, the tinkerer in the garage is now threatened, you know, by uh, big interests. And, and we must uh, be careful that research and development in science does not fall captive to a scientific technological elite. He said that in the same speech. He said the scientific technological elite 
could take over the normal business of people inventing things, people coming up with things, right? And uh, and that's what's happened. That's what that's what this COVID-1984 pandemic hoax is doing. It's setting up the scientific priesthood, where even if they're completely wrong about this COVID-1984 pandemic, completely wrong by the models, the Imperial College, British, you know, modeling group, you know, the computer models are crap. People have looked at them and said they're crap, right? It's all crap, right? The World Health Organization, crap. Wash your hands, stay away from people and stay home to deal with the most super deadly infectious disease in 100 years is all crap, right? Even though it's all crap, because of the censorship, because of the top-down control, you're not allowed to say that, right? You can't have experts who question experts anymore with this communist uh, scientific technological elite. So Dr. Shiva basically explains how the history of how science was corrupted. So today, if they say, Oh, science said this, science said that, the scientists said this. If you look at this interview, you'll know not to trust mainstream science because you'll understand how it got corrupted, right? Now, I'm not saying it's all bad, right? But you need experts who question experts. Just like before a major health decision, you know, if a doctor says, you know, that sore foot, it's going to need surgery. Like, surgery? Just a sore foot. I'm a doctor. It needs surgery. Well, I understand, doctor, but I want a second opinion. Why? Because it's a big health decision. You have a sore foot. Do you really want to operate on it? Or do you want to get a second opinion to say, well, maybe you could use, you know, physiotherapy and your foot won't be so sore. Give it a few weeks. And if we really need to, we'll operate later, right? Sometimes you need experts who question experts, just like getting a second opinion from a doctor. And then you can use your own head. You can use your own brain to say, well, does this guy's explanation more sense? And were we cool? Does he respect me? And he's talking straight up with me? Or does that guy's explanation more make more sense? Were we cool? What You can do that. Or a mechanic, right? You go to a car mechanic and they say, that's going to be $5,000 to fix your car. $5,000? I want a second opinion. You go to another mechanic. He says, well, you know what? That'll actually be 3,500, right? Do you trust him? Which you, you listen to the, it's not just a dollar amount. It's how they explain what they're going to do, right? So we need experts who question experts in the area of science. We can't just be like, but the scientists said this and I'm stupid and I'll do whatever they say. It's like, no, there are people like Dr. Shiva who are scientists. They are MIT trained PhDs, scientists, immune system specialists, and they can, can you can compare their explanation, right? If the World Health Organization says super deadly infectious disease, wash your hands, stay away from people and stay home. And then Dr. Shiva says, actually, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, no socialist distancing. People get depressed and, and, pretend, and think about killing themselves when they always are away from people. We're social beings. Really bad for your health to get depressed and stressed and, and depress your immune system and white blood cell count. And masks don't constantly breathe your own carbon dioxide and pass out and get in a car accident or breathe all the crap that's stored in there. Right? You can be like, okay. So I heard the World Health Organization. Wash your hands. Stay away from people. Stay home. Got it, super doctors. Now, let me hear the second opinion from Dr. Shiva and let me compare these explanations as an individual myself who's not a moron and see what makes the most sense. So we're being discouraged from doing that and that's why this interview um, you know, is so, is so um, important and interesting and why I shared it and YouTube deleted it. You see, so there's another one. Um, <clears throat> And um, all right, so that is the 18 videos that were deleted on May 21st and May 20 or May 20th and May 21st. Now we'll look at the videos deleted on May 22nd and yep, May 22nd. So here's the nine more. So there you go. And there it is. Your video is removed from YouTube. There's the first one. There's the number seven. There's the most recent one. So that one plus two plus seven is nine. These are the other nine videos deleted recently by YouTube. So it says here, raw video, Toronto May 16th anti-lockdown rally. The great Canadian house party, invite everyone, eight of 18, woo, right? Um, so yeah, this is just um, interview footage, uh, you know, typically at the great Canadian house party. There's 500, maybe even a thousand people there. It was a lot, right? It was over 500 for sure, I'm sure. Um, the previous one had about 500. This one was definitely over 500. Beautiful day, house party vibe, people mixing and mingling. 
kids playing, guys, girls, you know, some cool guys, and, and hot girls, and cute kids, right? It, it was fun, right? And, and nice girls and so on, right? Just a variety of people, very diverse crowd, you know, people who are more red-pilled, more into this, people were just like, I'm just sick of this. I'm not into any of this shit. I just know this is bullshit because I'm not a moron and I want to get back to work and I want to be free. I don't want to live in a prison, right? So you had people with more complex explanations of a variety of things that they were concerned about and people that were just, whatever, I'm just a Torontonian or an Ontarian and I just don't like this garbage, right? I don't like the way they're treating kids, can't see your friends, can't go to school, cancel summer camp, everyone's socialist distancing in France. They're making them play in little squares six feet away from each other. You get these little five, four, five, six-year-old kids are in little chalk squares on the playground, not allowed to go near each other. It's insane. Insane, right? Um, but there were people with different levels of understanding. But my point is, it says here in this raw video, they, YouTube, deleted it. So one of these interviews, and I have the specifics on in my list of whatever, but that you know YouTube deleted YouTube deleted that right. So that was eight of eighteen of the Great Canadian House Party May sixteenth anti-lockdown protest. And there's another one, two of eighteen. Also, just ordinary Canadians. I've got my little GoPro camera here. Like, hey, why are you holding the sign? Oh, well, I'm holding the sign that says, you know, 5G sucks or so-and-so or free hugs and we're special people or the media lies or, you know, uh, practice media distancing or, 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 or uh, I'm fighting for my gun rights or deleted it, gone, right? So this is ordinary people I'm interviewing, not even me, not even my, you know, obnoxious chatty Kathy, you know, or chatty, you know, uh, uh, Cody self, um, but, but, but these are people that I'm interviewing, right? And here's another one. Raw video, Toronto May 16th, anti-lockdown rally, 1 of 18. Also deleted. Guys saying Trudeau's got no balls or uh, poverty is bad for your health too. So this lockdown and shutdown, the lockdown is causing poverty, right? And there's a you know, nice guy, Chad, nice girl, Carrie saying that uh, as part of other stuff on here. Or a nice guy, Jonathan, uh, his wife, Beata, Jonathan reading a long prepared statement for about a minute and a half, you know, uh, about all this garbage. Gone. The raw video deleted and the end product, which I made, the hour plus video, which is the highlights of all these, to really give you an idea of how these people are great. Um, this is uh, spending an hour at a great house party. It's not Dan Bilzerian, the famous uh, you know rich poker player guy with a bunch of chicks and, and a big pool and Ferraris and stuff, but it's a really cool house party to be at. That hour plus video, bang, YouTube deleted, and these raw videos from that May 16th protest also deleted. Here's another one, nine of 18 from the same thing, deleted, right? So they went through these and they looked at these individual videos from that and they went, oh, this guy's got to go, right? Um, here we go, COVID done, Toronto May 16 anti-lockdown rally. The Great Canadian House Party, invite everyone, right? Just trying to make the point that you can invite everyone to this, right? Because uh, it's a bunch of proud, polite, patriotic Canadians, not angry, crazy, messed up people, not typical leftist, you know, messed up protesters or paid protesters and, you know, make noise but can't make sense. No, just a bunch of just people you would see on the street, people you would see at work, people you would get along with who might not even normally discuss these issues unless you felt comfortable doing so. But people who have, you know, aren't stupid and they've got strong feelings and they care about uh, each other and where they live, and and they're here to try and help people, you know, people where they live and and where they live, right? And um and so the main hour and 22 minute video highlight I put together was deleted by YouTube, right? And then BitChute was giving me problems with it, the, the sort of main 720p, you know, decent quality 1080, 720p uh, video. Um, BitChute was having troubles. So I had to make a slightly lower quality one. And the regular 1280 by 720p as opposed to 1080 because it's just going to be a huge file, pain in the ass. So BitChute was giving me trouble, excuse me, and I, it, took me a, it took me seven copies to finally get a copy working on BitChute, whereas the one that was up on YouTube right away was deleted right away. Right? So that's, that's you know, it was deleted, you know, like three hours after I uploaded it, after all that work. Real pain in the ass. Another one, raw video, Toronto May 16, anti-lockdown rally, the Great Canadian House Party, invite everyone, 7 of 18. Also deleted. So again, this isn't me. You know, there's a, a, you know, a bit of me asking questions and a bit of me mixing with people at this great house party. 
but it's mostly about the other people being censored here as well. And then four of 18 from May 16th, the exact same house party, also deleted. And then 17 of 18, also deleted. Right? And... Aha! 10 of 18, also deleted. And that's it. And there you go. So these are the videos that were removed by YouTube. And as you can see with the last, you know, uh, several, they were raw videos from the Toronto uh, anti-lockdown protest or rally or the Great Canadian House Party that was held on May 16th, 2020 uh, at Queen's Park, north of College and University from around 12 to 3 p.m. And so there were all those videos of not even me but of me filming these other people speaking and just the raw videos which I post so that anybody else can use them to make better videos or other videos because I'm trying to make sure that other people have access to the raw videos as well, the raw 1080p high quality videos that they can use to make their own, right? If I make an hour plus highlight video, but somebody makes a three minute, you know, little advertising compilation or whatever, or they just use some of the shots of the crowd to make some cool inspirational thing with more skill than I have, go for it, right? It's, it's, it's up to you, right? Or they want to use a couple of especially catchy, it's, boom, here's the raw videos, use them. I've also have them posted at archive.org now. You can see the link below so that um, hopefully they won't be deleted from there and uh, people can, can grab these raw videos from there. They're also, they were on my BitChute channel, but I decided, all right, I'm not going to clutter up my main pages. I'm going to post them at archive.org now so that my main page isn't all cluttered and people who aren't, say, from Toronto or Ontario or Canada who want to subscribe don't have to look at 18 different videos, you know, from that are raw videos from this. They can just look at the main video, um, and then uh, and then the people that want to say, you know, I want to see the raw videos, or I want to download them so I can make good videos because I'm a better video maker than you. Go for it. Just go to archive.org. You can find them there. But my point in explaining all this is sort of uh, in detail. What is YouTube censoring? Why are they censoring it? Does this make them more trustworthy or less trustworthy? Obviously, for many people, this is a pretty open question right now, right? It's a, it's a pretty, uh, you know, a settled question. No, YouTube's bullshit, right? They're, they're jacking us, right? They're censoring me as a proud, polite, patriotic Canadian trying to do the right thing for where I live and the people where I live. They're censoring other proud, polite, patriotic Canadians trying to communicate about this as seen by the censoring of the raw videos. And they're censoring patriots worldwide. Why? Because they don't want us to do good things for uh, you know, each other and the people where we live and where we live. And that is a problem that we should solve. So, um, you know, we'll leave it there for now. But I, I did want to go through, you know, why did YouTube censor 27 of my videos in three days? And I hope this explanation kind of, um, you know, is, is, is de in detail says this is what they were. You can fact check them yourself in my BitChute account. I think, you know, they're all still there last I saw. So, um, but that's basically what they're doing. This is what they're censoring, right? Plus lots and lots of other stuff. And I think that's wrong. And I think we should all fight against that. We should support uh, independent media sources like BitChute and others. And um, and we should we should make sure that we, you know, we, we hold YouTube accountable for this and we get the word out to everybody about how YouTube censorship is becoming normal and it's becoming well known but it shouldn't be normal and well-known and accepted. It should be the type of thing that pisses us off, that makes us spit every time the platform's name comes up. And yet, it's still a good platform. The, the technology is good, right? The fact that you upload right away, the video's there right away. It takes some time, but there's no upload and then wait for it to process and then wait for it to be ready to publish. And then does it even finish processing or do you have to upload another copy like BitChute, right? The, the quality, the video quality is great. The 1080p uh, up to 2180, you know, you know, super high quality, right? So the, the, the technology is great and it's better than any technology I've seen out there when it comes to a video platform. The search, like BitChute's got like four videos per page. YouTube's got like 24 videos per page, right? And BitChute, it's down a mile long scroll. So YouTube as a platform 
is better, right? As a technology platform with the sort of uh, billions, billions and billions of dollars of Google behind them and research and top flight technology, right? YouTube is an excellent platform from a technical perspective. And if we can beat the censorship, then we, it, it can be great from all perspectives. And we can still encourage other platforms out there to do a great job growing as well. And we can have, you know, lots of different options and lots of different competition and, uh, and so on. Uh, so we can have a great time online. And of course, we should be able to win the offline info war, which is not just online, right? I'm sick of online, especially in the nice weather. I have way less interest in talking to a camera or looking at people talking to cameras than I do in meeting with other patriots, even at the protests or rallies. We were talking about how the energy of connecting with each other as people, people who are kind of red pill, people who are patriots, people who are concerned about what's going on, people who are having real conversations with each other, people who live near each other and have shared interests in you know what's happening where they live that energy is a lot it's a lot better it's a lot more kinetic than the energy you get from talking to a camera or looking at people who talk to cameras or watching videos on the internet right the energy of connecting with your neighbors is incredibly important and that's why winning the offline info war is crucially important so i'll leave on that note in the sense that i recommend patriots do what we did back in the day we used meetup.com to you know you can use facebook or whatever but we, we used meetup.com. Basically, a bunch of us were kind of red-pilled. We were watching different videos by different filmmakers, the Money Masters or America Freedom to Fascism or Alex Jones' classic work when he was a, a young man and furiously filmmaker. Now he's an older businessman and pundit pontificator as opposed to spending you know 18 hours a day obsessively editing videos with that young man energy, right? But we were watching a bunch of red-pilled stuff, and this is before social media, and we didn't have that many people to talk about it with. So um, somebody set up, I don't even know who it was, but somebody set up a group called Toronto Truth Seekers, right? And they said, hey, we're going to meet, you know, every um, uh, Saturday around noon for a couple of hours at this shawarma place, right? Where we could have shawarma sandwiches, right? So we met there, you know, 10 people, 15, 20 people, typically around 20 people, 15 to 25 people, basically, right? Was kind of what the size of the group was, right? But we get together. We'd order shawarma sandwiches or falafels. We'd chill out, and we were just talking to each other, right? Patriots just talking to each other. Hey, did you see this movie? Oh, I did. What'd you think of that? Oh, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. How about this? You know, the meeting was over, you know, around, you know, 2, 3 p.m. or 2 o'clock, you know, a couple of hours later, 2, 3 p.m. or whatever. And I said, like, oh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you next week. And we had a great time connecting with people like that of like mind offline right? So all it was, all it started off was, was just pay, local patriots getting together, just like other meetup groups, where it's the chess meetup, the knitting club meetup, the book club meetup, the parachuting meetup, right? Meetup.com had a bunch of those local meetup groups, right? And um, so lots of people use meetup.com to meet about their interests. Ours just happened to be Toronto truth seekers, truthers, seeking the truth, patriots, you know, whatever. If, if some of those words have a negative connotation, whatever. So we were just meeting, you know, every Saturday and we were just meeting and hanging out and talking and getting along and becoming friends, right? And as we became friends, some of us would hang out, you know, the people that got along better at these sort of things would become closer friends, you know, exchange phone numbers, exchange emails, you know, maybe hang out outside of that, right? And then we, that was the, the sort of red pill bill. And then we went back to our blue pill lives, right? Blue pill job, blue pill friends, blue pill parties, blue pill bars, blue pill you know, restaurants, blue pill, whatever, right? So we had both. We had the red pill, you know, red pillville, and then we had blue pillville, right? And you, you, you know, you, the twain didn't mix, right? You can maybe casually talk about it with people, but you wouldn't go into it with people that much if, if they weren't comfortable with it, right? But we had a group of friends who we could speak freely with. We didn't have to be like, hey, I saw this crazy documentary about how rich evil people print money from nothing to control the world. And your friend's like, uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. And you're like, never mind, never mind, you know? You know, let's talk about the Raptors or Blue Jays or Leafs or something, right? It's like, it's like you know, you had people you could speak freely with offline, which is great. Then we became friends. And the more we talked about, oh, this is so crazy. Man, they want to microchip us. They want to nanochip us. They want to vaccinate us. They want to track, search, drug, and chip us. And they want to control us. And they want to kill us. And they want to, oh, it's good. The more we hung out and talked about it, it was cathartic. 
And it was good to kind of speak freely on these things and in real time, back and forth, not just typing online, not just leaving comments online. You know, like these days, you know, uh, the sort of, um, you know, Twitter or Gab <clears throat> or social media, goldfish eating, pooping and forgetting bits of crap, repost, retweet, repost, retweet, repost, re little, blah, 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 you know, and then just disappears <clears throat> with a long string of stuff. You no, know, it's really looking at, talking to, listening to each other, right? So that was great. But then we felt like acting, right? So then some of us are like, we got to do something about this. We can't just sit here and talk about how these people are crazy and they want to do crazy things to us and everyone where we live. We have to do something, right? So we set up um, a, a meet and greet table at Dundas Square in downtown Toronto, Canada. And <clears throat> we had our table there. It started off very small. It grew into a larger table, bigger this with a big umbrella with some signage on it or whatever. And we printed up with our own money and we took some donations later on after a while right but we printed up our own flyers and 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 so on and and we had our own posters and flyers and dvds and we would be there a group of you know 10 15 20 25 depending on the size of the group polite patriots just chilling on a nice day a beautiful summer day like the summer days we see in toronto and other parts of the west today right just be chilling just right in the middle of town, right outside the Eaton Center, a giant mall, right at Young and Dundas, the very center of Toronto, basically downtown Toronto anyway, not the sort of geographical center of the whole city, but if you're going to go downtown, Young and Dundas is arguably the center, the heart of downtown Toronto. And there were <clears throat> thousands of people milling about, and we were just casually talking to each other or casually handing out, you know, flyers, you know, thank you. People would smile, oh, okay, sure, take it. Some people like, eh, no thanks, eh. Next person, <clears throat> there you go, and we just do it. It was all casual. We weren't frantic or furious. We weren't arguing, yelling, screaming. You need to hear this, or, or you're gonna die. What's wrong with you? We weren't doing nothing like that. <clears throat> we were just chilling, getting along with each other, ignoring people who ignored us, politely saying hi to people who said hi to us because they were just curious about us. Huh, a bunch of people over there doing something. Yeah, how you doing? Wonder if they're weird or not. No, just cool, saying hi, saying hi. Some people would just take something to go. He'll come over and talk to us. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've got my concerns about the vaccines too. And it's like, well, yeah, here you go. This is where you can get exemption forms, vran.org. Well, I don't know. I think some are pretty good. Some might have cured polio. Well, do you want to talk about it? We can talk about whether that was real shit or bullshit, whether it was the vaccine or whether it was just, uh, you know, better food and hygiene, right? And and other, you know, and we just have conversations with people and <clears throat> they'd come over and then people would see other people coming over and being nice and looking at and talking to us or being nice and looking at and talking to them and they would feel like coming over and so <clears throat> we had people constantly coming over hanging out mixing with us and the only people that looked crazy were the people that would you know that hated us or saw something that triggered them and they you people are crazy i don't know how could you do this what are you doing here <laughs> those people look crazy to us to everybody else watching right? The people that couldn't handle it, the people that freaked out, right? There's just a, very rare, but just a couple of people freaked out over seeing some our signage on the little table that we had or something that, you know, said whatever, right? A couple of people freaked out, but they looked crazy. We, the polite patriots, did not look or act crazy. The regular people out there, the audience, the third party, they didn't look or act crazy. The crazy person freaking out over what we were standing for or saying or doing or the information we were sharing the person freaking out about that they looked crazy right so that's important that's why polite patriotism is so important right and um <clears throat> so we were there like every saturday for the summer and we were there from noon to like 3 4 p.m and then we packed up all our stuff we gave out thousands and thousands of flyers and dvds and so on we um we gave out thousands of legal vaccine exemption forms to parents who came up to us coming from all over the toronto area an hour two hours away right maybe not just to see us but definitely to see us like they that was a major part of their trip was making sure they saw us we printed out these eight and a half by 11 forms because the swine flu vaccine was going to kill everybody back then and they were like oh, can i have two vaccine exemption forms please are you the people with the exemption forms can i have two please thanks just thousands and thousands and oh sure here you go and we gave them a little flyer with the website where they could download and print their own right um and uh, and so we did that right and then after 12 to 3 4 p.m we did that and then we got tired we got chilled people had to go whatever we kind of wrapped things up and then we went out to eat we celebrated a great day 
you're like, that was a great day. Hey, remember that guy? Remember this? Remember so and so? Blah blah blah. And, you know, we, we we went out we went out for a meal after that, right? That was that was a great Saturday. That was a Saturday we had, we had so much fun. Like it was it was you know arguably the best part of our week in terms of being free to express ourselves with other people free to express themselves, confident, polite, proud, patriotic Canadians. You know, um, you know, getting together, doing something worth doing you know, for ourselves and everyone else where we live, right? It's worth doing this, right? So that was a huge part of, of, of our social life, right? And then, you know, afterwards, you know, 12 to 3, 4 p.m., then 4 to 6, 7 p.m., you know, whatever, doing all this stuff. And then, all right, I'll see my red pill buddies later. Then I just go to a regular house party with my other buddies, right? And then, you know, a couple of times they say, oh, we were out in the streets today? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing that stuff. Cool, man, how'd it go? Well, it went great, man, you know, whatever, you know? So talked about it a little bit with some people who wanted to, didn't talk about other people who didn't. Sometimes I had a little flyer, buddy of mine's having a kid. Say, look, man, let's not talk about this at a party. Just take this little piece of paper, put it in his breast pocket. This is just some stuff in vaccines. We don't want to get into it too much here at this house party, but just take a look at it later. Stupid, laugh, throw it out, don't worry. These are cheap, these are like two cents each. But if it's smart, enjoy it, use it. You want to talk to me, fine, you don't, no problem. Just make an informed decision, cool? Yeah, sure, buddy. Put it, just took it like that, put it in his breast pocket, <clears throat> done. Now, what's up? Let's talk about The Simpsons. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about girls. Let's talk about guys. Let's talk about money, it's whatever, right? So that was what we did, right? And um, <clears throat> plus, a bunch of us guys especially, a smaller group, you know, 15 <clears throat> to 25 with the street action. And then <clears throat> sometimes, you know, three, four, five, ten 10 <clears throat> guys loaded up our backpacks with a bunch of posters and flyers <clears throat> and we went around the city slapping posters up flyering cars flyering buildings typically in teams of two it's okay you go that way up the street we'll go this way up the street and we'll meet you back here in half an hour cool cool right boom boom and we would just we would just go military style military style right just <clears throat> hitting up all the businesses hitting up all the mailboxes hitting up all the car windshield wipers you know just leaving them there um you know uh, Apartment buildings, you know, start at the top, make your way. Okay, you know, okay, can we get in that apartment building? Yeah, you can get in that apartment building. As soon as they open the door, no security, whatever, no problem. We're not being jerks. If anybody catches us, what are you doing? Well, we're sharing information to help people be informed and empowered, right? And we think it's helpful and it's better than junk mail. Polite patriots can beat junk mail. You usually get junk mail. You get a Wendy's coupon, you get some grocery store flyers, some real estate agent trying to, you know, get you to use him to sell you, sell or buy a house. We can beat that. The stuff we're, the stuff, our stuff beats that, right? <clears throat> we're not against that. <clears throat> you can get all that stuff. It's fine. But our stuff is just as good, if not better than that, right? So, <clears throat> you know, so we do that. All right, uh, you know, let's hit an apartment building. I'll take odds. You take evens, right? And I did all the odd floors, went down every, you know, this floor, stairwell, that floor, stairwell, other guy, even floor, stairwell, even floor. Met at the bottom, cool. Finished, done. Out of flyers, you know, out of posters or whatever. Call it a night, right? Because we were really worried at the time about what was going to go on, right? So we were really kind of military style against the swine flu, like just the, the, the hardcore, especially guys. Nothing against girls. I love girls. I love girls. Great. As a man, I can I can say to any man who's ever lived or ever will, you got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight and defend your country. You can say to any man who's ever lived or any man who ever will, just to feel like a man myself, just like any man can, right? When it comes to girls, <clears throat> more than welcome to, supportive, help them, whatever, but I can't treat them the same. And I've seen the problems that happen when it comes to people being able to have self-respect and respect each other when we all think we're the same. We're all kind of sideways, not sure what to do, compliant corporate clones or commie zombies, you know, it's it's a lot worse, right? So, um, <clears throat> so, so there were girls at the table, there were girls at the meeting, right? <clears throat> but when it comes to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the military style, <clears throat> 50 pound backpack full of heavy paper, posters, flyers or whatever, going out, slapping them up, going through parking lots, <clears throat> getting chased by security, getting stopped by the cops, right? Like, you know, questioning us about this, that and the other. That was where we manned up. And we, we, we handled that, right? <clears throat> and we felt great. We felt great. Didn't suck, right? And then, you know, the group, you know, kind of dissolved later on over some BS or whatever, um, you know, as, as these things happen, right? Um, but, um, you know, I do bring that point up to say it was a great time. There's video of a lot of it, like I share, you know, you can see the description below. And it's something that we can do today, right? 
um, it's something that we can bring back because that that beats swine flu. We were even covered on CBC News. They sent over a camera crew, as, a, as I think I mentioned earlier, you know, to cover us in, in, in this vlog. Um, and, um, and, <clears throat> and, and people liked it, you know, because we were cool. They weren't sheep. We weren't crazy. We were just polite Canadians with, you know, trying to do the right thing. And they were polite Canadians who were either curious about it or not. If not, we didn't bother them. We didn't bother each other. We didn't bother anyone. And nobody bothered us. And the few people that did act crazy looked crazy to everybody. Right? But the rest of us were cool. And the same thing can happen today when it comes to beating this new flu. Right? We did this to beat swine flu. And the same thing can be done locally, everywhere you're allowed to still go outside and freely express yourself today. Not just at protests, but to reach out to your neighbors and connect with them and give them a chance to hear different and think for themselves. Give them a chance to learn more <clears throat> and give them a chance to defend their country. Right? There's a lot of people out there that wouldn't mind a chance to defend their country if they knew that their country was under attack and if they knew that there was something they could do to fight back, which includes not just staying at home, waiting for your guns and waiting for the drones to show up and waiting to shoot, you know, the first five or 10 before you run out of bullets and the next 15 or 20, you know, just destroy your house, right? <clears throat> You're not just waiting for the armed revolution, right? If you can locally organize with your neighbors, to win the offline info war in the way that I just mentioned, then I believe that you could possibly organize with your neighbors to win an armed war, right? If you're in America where there's lots of guns or in Canada where there are some people with guns, but if you can't organize to, to, to take action and win the offline info war, I don't have a lot of faith that you'll be able to organize to take action to win a physical confrontation with guns, right? I wish everyone luck if it comes to that. I'll certainly try and fight myself I don't have guns. I'll try and go on the internet and figure out how to make a potato gun or get a 3D printer, try and make a 3D printer gun, a printed gun, right? Whatever. But my point is that if you can organize, locally organize with your neighbors to win the offline info war and establish that polite patriots are doing a good job for, 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 for people where they live and you can get everybody kind of informed and empowered, especially in the summer of 2020, when we only have so much time before mandatory, uh, you know, uh, uh, tracking and searching and drugging and chipping and vaccines and, 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 and lockdowns and quarantines. And if you've ever come within 50 feet of somebody with a coronavirus antibody, like anybody who's ever had a flu, then they have to track everything you ever do, you know, because you might also have the flu or have, you know, the this insanity, right? Instead, you know, we can beat that today if we feel like it and if we take action, right? And, 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 and this has already worked before after a fashion and it can work again with many more people who can just get off the internet instead of sharing memes with each other, just sharing snarky comments, not trying to insult you, but I see what's going on out there relative to what could. And so it's, people have to say this stuff. People like me who can have to say this stuff, have to say, look, if you're serious enough about this to write that, type that, make that meme, share with other people who already think the same way, um, then you, you could be serious enough to do the other things that I say or, or build on them or improve on them. Don't do it. Don't do it because I said it. Do it because you think it's a good idea and then do your own version of this or think of something better or improve on it. It's all good. We're all sharing Patriot best practices worldwide so we can locally take action and save where we live. And to me, winning the offline info war in the ways I suggested is a Patriot best practice. It is something that's been proven to work, been proven uh, that civilians were cool with it, Patriots were cool with it, media's cool with it, the police were cool with it, everyone was cool with it, right? And the same thing, while we're still allowed out, while the weather's nice enough to go out, while there are many other people out, you know, then people uh, worldwide, you know, can do this. If you look at what the people in Hong Kong are doing against the evil communist Chinese government, the murderous regime with live organ harvesting, with trapping millions of Muslim Uyghurs, with going out in the streets, with dealing with the cops now, you know, more and more aligned with the giant communist evil Chinese government and military next door to Hong Kong, with the Chinese mafia groups and triad groups that are there that are also beating up on the protest. If you see all these brave Hong Kong protesters, students, people of all ages fighting against this, using bricks, you know, uh, you know, making barricades, now, all this shit. 
if they can do that and other people around the world have defended their countries you know doing a lot less than or a lot more than this then we can all do this right so that's why i leave you with the offline info war as 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 you know the final the final solution not to use the hitler term but as as a, as a, as a great uh, option you know to, you know to 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 consider right if they can do that people in hong kong can do that and if people if our ancestors have done a lot more than this to defend their countries then we worldwide wherever we legally can can do this and this will help and this will work and i'm not saying it's going to take care of all our problems but what it will do is it will inform and empower everybody where you live and that will help take care of all our problems and that can't be a bad thing so um <clears throat> so there you have it um you know we'll leave it there for now um bk for manforwars.com man for wars media feel free to like comment subscribe share get in touch with questions answers uh to work together or financial support see the description uh below for more and uh otherwise um i hope this helps i hope this gives you something great to do and uh and i hope this analysis of youtube is something that helps too and i'll talk to you soon cheers <laughs>